But to me it seems quite clear That it's all just a little bit of history repeating On this glorious spring October day in Melbourne, the first Saturday in October, the two teams are starting to sort themselves out prior to the replay of the 2010 Grand Final. Ross Lyon and Mickey Moldhouse, the two coaches. I wonder if Roscoe can join Alan Jeans and also Mickey Moldhouse can win a third premiership here. Here's the St Kilda coach. He's made a bidding impact. Let's go down to the boundary, Matthew Richardson and Tim Watson. Well, Richo, the build-up has been different than last week. Pre-game, we talked about how different it felt as well. But from the moment the players came out onto the ground, it feels like it did seven days ago. Oh, it's amazing down here now. You've got a lot more supporters from each club. When the theme songs went up, they went up with them. We've just had ACDC blaring. We can barely hear, but it's just a fantastic atmosphere down here. Last week, 189 tackles. It was a close game. It was an intense game. The conditions very different than last week, though. There's no cloud cover, a lot of sun, probably two or three degrees warmer than what it was last week. I don't think we're going to get the same game. I think we're going to get this game's going to open up at some stage this afternoon. Well, one thing that always happens is that Collingwood lead in their matches. They're always in front. They always go down to that crowd. Lee, they've barely been behind, certainly in the final series this year, but for much of this season, they have led practically from the first bounce. Well, I think we've seen with Collingwood, they are capable of playing at a speed that no other team can. They're so quick, but that means they jump into game. Sometimes as the game wears on and the speed goes out of the game, that's when they've probably been off there at their peak. But their early games, as we saw in the first half last week, so the Saints, do they attack early or they try and contain, do you reckon? Look, I think they take a lot out of their second half. That's the way they play their football. Well, the Saints are ready. They're not delayed today. Ready to go, ready to go into battle and now joined by a familiar foe. They've set up a rivalry, these two, as we go down to Craig Willis. Ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to stand for the Australian National Anthem to be performed by Julie Anthony. Five years ago, a thoroughbred went from champion to legend by winning a Melbourne Cup. You feel like blokes like Goddard are two hours away or maybe a swan from doing that because that's what the winning team will have surrounding them for the rest of their lives. Well, absolutely. When your nerves are jangling as they are right now, it's whether it can lift players or whether it sinks them. And we've seen it over the years. Just at the moment, it lifted Goddard last week. Maybe Swan's thinking it's sunk me a bit. Toss, you can face oh, it. Yeah, come, so come over here. So the toss of the coin. In now and I'll introduce you to him. Nick, good luck, mate. Hey, Nick, good luck. This is Pam. Nick Revolt, you're, you're cool, mate. Heads was the call. Tails. So, Connie will win the toss. Pam Mawson did the toss. She's from the St Kilda cheer squad. They won that battle best of three earlier in the week. The two necks, seen a bit of each other in the last couple of weeks. Various functions, the two rival captains, and they'll be close again this afternoon in more ways than one. Final message from Nick Revolt. 
The underdogs, St Kilda, and the favourites at their favourite end at the city end down in front of their cheer squad, Collingwood. Can they annex their first premiership since 1990? Lee, you mentioned five minutes ago last week that St Kilda, having lost the year before, that would really help them at that point. That's all gone now, I reckon, don't you? Well, well no, I think the same thing happens this week. But it's not until the last ten minutes or the last five minutes when things are really tight. That's when the memory, like last week, it was the nothing memory. Mm. The year before, there was a devastation memory. Mm. That's much, much worse. I think Mick Malthouse also has some ammunition on the fact that, you know, we... It was gut-wrenching to play in a draw. Also, there is that net tomorrow, the next day, and that sort of thing. But you've got to really drive that home when the when the game is in the balance. You've got to get the job done. You sound like a firm of psychologists, Matthews, <laughs> Harley, and Kometi. Hasn't got a ring to it. Just about set then. Players to their positions. Lenny Hayes, the only winner last week, took home a medal. On the back of 32 possessions, there he is. What a game he played. But a hollow victory in as much as he has to come back and do it all over again. And of course, another Norm Smith medal will be presented today. Leon Davis, who played last week, will get a premiership medal if Collingwood win. And we see Gilbert's heading to defence. Just looking, sort of, Kaczynski starting forward. McAvoy's going to start in the right. What a day for Ben McAvoy. Left out last week, half right. Interesting to see that Nick Dal Santo for St Kilda starting in the forward line. Looks like Alan Tooby's going to him. He's had a really good final series, Tooby. Leads the club right. in tackles. Dawson and Clark. So we're set to go. It will be decided this afternoon, one way or another. No impasse here, but lots of passion. Welcome back to the MCG. And a good one to the start proceedings. Tap down by Jolly as he did last week. Scramble inside the centre circle. Schneider oh! against the flow. Gets a hand pass down towards half forward. Well done by Lee Brown. Came in strongly. Kicks it towards half forward. Dawes brilliantly. Pendlebury. Pendlebury to the square. Mark is taken by Cloak. Five metres out. Have they beaten last week's time? They got the first goal in 24 seconds last week. Pendlebury involved. And when you know it, it's happened again. This is a replay. <laughs> <laughs> We're in for a good day then. Just here. The blood rule with Dawson Let here. Let me know, Jack. Isn't it amazing to see Colling with this final series break the game away from the start Actually, and the get it? Change of free kick. Oh, there was a free, free kick off the ball. Hold the footy. 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 Hold the Somebody footy. just ripped up the script. Jack. 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 Brilliant. Jack. Are we ready? So. Oh. I think that's fair to say. Oh, goal mean, went begging. Yeah, no doubt. Used to I say to players, when you've got the ball, let the opposition do anything to you. Don't give the umpire a chance to draw, to uh, turn the ball over. And it's happened. And Travis Clark would have liked an early one like that, wouldn't he, from the square? Mm. One of the key messages from Ross Lyon, I think, from last week's game was to start the game well. So a goal to Collingwood within the first 20 seconds would have been extremely oh. deflating. So Blake to Gwilt. This is the Saints footy. Gwilt so good last week. Tries to penetrate early and find Schneider. Well, what a remarkable start. Kaczynski worked underneath it by Reed. Side bottom. Still the only teenager out there as he was last week. And now Johnson. I'm not sure if he really wanted Reed. I think he wanted the next man in Dida, but Reed took it anyway. Pendlebury's free. Against Baker. So Pendlebury, just five kicks last week, starts well here. He started well last week in short to ball. As Dennis mentioned, strange thing, footy. Captain Saints plays in his second grand final against them in a week. Kicks to the pocket, not a good kick. He might have been looking for his old teammate there. Fisher did well, dropping back, took the mark. He's got a, did it at both ends last week to Gilbert, confronted. Slips a quick away, but straight into the hands of O'Brien. So Harry O'Brien will kick at goal from about 45 metres. It's the play on, isn't it? One thing we know about Collingwood, when, the, when, the, when the, we see the reversal, just uh, Jump out. bottom of frame there, that Harry, was it. Take him, take him out. Against Swan, was it? Swan. Yep. Crazy. Meantime, Harry O'Brien kicks and this swings violently right to left, out of bounds on the full end, or a mark, out of bounds on the full. Kick to be taken by Fisher, who knocked up taking marks last week. 
One thing we've seen already is a huge work rate from Brendan Goddard. When St Kilda was streaming forward, he was pushing into the forward 50, and now he's right back on the defensive 50. To the outer side, Maxwell, two-fisted, knocks it close to the boundary. Shaw pushed off the line of the football. It goes out of bounds. Amazing. We've been going almost uh, two and a bit minutes. It's just been in uh, Collingwood's forward half. Again, they've just uh, controlled the footy early. But they haven't got that early score that yet. they look to have in their hands. Here is Swan. He was the culprit and kicks towards the goals. Blake getting back. Fisher again. A third disposal for him under pressure. Back to Baker. Having trouble with the press, aren't they? Getting it out. Had the opportunity then, St Kilda, to actually come back out onto the fat side of the ground yeah. where there was plenty of space. But Sam Fisher's initial thought was to go back down the traffic line. So I would have liked to see him wheel around into the space for uh, St Kilda pushing forward. McAvoy, Jolly won the tap clearly to ball. Saints did well not to give a high kick away. Dempster tried to toe poke it. Milne in the back half, brought down. Quick kick by McCaffrey to fall forward. Doors on hands and knees. Can't quite get upside bottom. Had an airy. Down low, Schneider, well done. Gilbert built it outside the 50. And it's coming back, Nathan Brown gets on the end of it. Looks inside the forward 50, high ball, get under that one, plenty of Saints in the vicinity, and the mark is taken by Goddard. So again, incessant attacking from Collingwood, being held up by the Saints, what a beautiful kick to the outer side, Revolt, nothing much up ahead, just lays the ball into the path of Kazetsky, bounces right on the 50, Maxwell with the bounce best, runs onto the loose ball, goes towards the outer side, the bounce favours side bottom, it got away from him, but inadvertently that helped, he kicks down towards the attacking 50, Doors brilliant, knocked it to Cloak, Cloak the long ball, gold sack. Well, he doesn't kick too many goals, Tyson Goldsack. Well, you wouldn't have got this last week, Tyson Goldsack, for the first goal. Hasn't kicked a goal this season. Just on the ground. Five career goals. Uh, this will test him. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? Goldsack to kick the first goal in the grand final. Not too many. Probably not even him. Goals out, kicks it. That's been uh, an interesting start to the game. Coley would have started the way they usually do, just they look quicker, they're moving the ball. St Kilda are actually trying to move the ball too quickly themselves. I think early in the game, they just have to be prepared to kick the footy, take their time. Moving, moving the ball from their set shot marks because on the rebound, Collingwood are going to continually find space and players. Now, this is exactly where the goal was generated. McWalter's actually trying to do a job on Maxwell. Maxwell's read the play, generated the turnover. They're still the number one side in the competition at scoring from turnovers. That started the forward foray. That's the perfect build-up for Collingwood. Long way to go, but Collingwood selectors will be thinking, yeah, that wasn't a bad change. Gold sack in. <laughs> <laughs> Just at the moment, the game has pretty much started with the kind of matchups that last week's game started with. Now, that's working for Collingwood. But at the moment, James is trying to take Swan, for instance. No. That's not really working at this point of time. So it's as if we've gone back a week at this point. So McAvoy, Thomas was the third man up. Saw all that from the Saints last week. Del Sando and Johnson cut off by Tuvi. McAvoy got down low. Thomas was terrific. Well done, Ray. Stood up in the challenge. Kicks to half forward. Revolt and Brown. Revolt overruns it. Eddie in hard. Rode the O'Brien bump pretty well. Harry collects it and gallops for the second running bounce. We didn't see much of that last week. Belts it forward under pressure. Two half forward. McCaffrey's hands not good there. Gwilt. Hayes running hard with Wellingham, searching for it. Lenny got down low as he so often does. Boundary throwing. And speaking of the boundary, Matthew Richardson. Thanks, Bruce. Well, just at that last goal was kicked. Dane Swan sprinted off the ground with his uh, tagger Jones. As soon as he went off, Jones sat on the bench. Swan ran straight back on to try and lose the tag. Not the first time we've seen that. Jolly taps it down. Swan just missed. After the football goes McAvoy, Wellingham, head down. At the lesson moments ago, Wellingham, body to body with Hayes. Hayes so hard to shift, wonderful balance. One of the things, at the moment, secured about 12 kicks, 
and they've had eight handballs. Collingwood 16 kicks, three handballs. Collingwood are kicking the footy. St Kilda got to start doing that as well. Hayes loves that situation, third man up. Moments ago saw Thomas doing it for Collingwood. Goddard started well, hand passes towards midfield. Brilliant pickup by Maxwell. Ran into a dead end, Schneider goes in. Can't do much with it. Some heavy work done on the ground. But the base of all of that is Eddie. Speaking of Eddie and Maxwell, Eddie's doing a defensive job on Maxwell. He's got to draw the footy. He can't afford just to play on Nick Maxwell as a forward. Jolly tapped it down. Wellingham kicks inside the forward 50 to space. Out in front is Blake. Awkward bounce. Blake leads back in the race. Aided by Gwilt. So good last week. Stolen by Dawes. Dawes goes in. Ricochets off the defender down there and Fisher are behind. We're almost nine minutes into the game and St Kilda haven't had an inside 50 yet, so the game is definitely being played in Collingwood's half. Can't get a forward. I mean, the lesson that St Kilda put into play in the second half was to try and kick the ball forward under intense pressure. Don't try and hand pass your way out of pressure. So got out short to Quilt. This is where they had a lot of problems early last week from the kickouts. So Quilt gets the ball to half back, revolt up the ground. Brown did well as an effective tap forward. Tim Watson on the boundary. Just on the inside 50, St Kilda hasn't won an inside 50 count since round 21. So defensively, they've been able to stand up. But once again, they're under the pump. So you heard no, the you ran straight at him and blocked him, Blake. So against Lee Brown, to Kaczynski. I wonder how much we'll see him in the ruck. He was very good in the second half. Concedes to Dal Sando. Dal Sando goes back again to Fisher. So often the playmaker to Blake. Blake at half back. He started on goal set. Takes a while and then delivers. Oh, Jim Ray stood up well. Got to mark it. Clear it out. Play on. Blair was bearing down. Del Santo left half back. Two to choose from. Wants to draw a man. Now we'll pop it over the top. Well, Pete didn't do him any favours. Pete came at him late. And as a result, coming up, Turby was able to take the mark on his chest. Comes down the broadcast side. Dawes been handy so far. Wilt knocked it away. Jones over the football and hard to shift. Tackled by Wellingham. That ball's not releasing. Sharon, jump off him. So he's saying Wellingham, I think, dragged it in. Yeah, that was a strong contested mark in the middle from Baron Ray. If the ball had come to ground, Collingwood would had opened up St Kilda's defence. He's done two strong things in this opening term, Ray. That second half might have been... No, no again, Lee. Free kick, Jason Blake. That second Three. half might have been the making of him in some ways. We know he's a talent. But it was a big second half he played on Swan. So a couple of free kicks. In fact, some important free kicks for the Saints early when you think back to that opening one. So Blake, off one step, kicks the ball to revolt, push forward in the marking contest revolt. And Kaczynski got down low with Wellingham. Now, this is the problem that St Kilda have got. Collingwood really trying to orchestrate that free man. They're putting a lot of time into Maxwell and O'Brien with Eddie and Mick Walter, yep. but it still frees someone up. It's been O'Brien at times, but at the moment, it seems to be Ben Reid. Brown struggling for the moment on the ball. Taps it down that time. Jones under pressure. Still no inside 50s. Could be one here, though. Saints in control. Peak went to ground, comes back, gets it, tries to flick it across to Hayes. Hand pass came from Graham, kick from Jones. Getting back, Maxwell. Short, one to side bottom. Shaw is on. Shaw's got it now. Maxwell's peeled off. Here he comes. Takes the football, runs to the wing. Inside, Luke Ball. Gets a hand pass intended, I think, for Didat. Behind him was Brown. Will put the body in. That was terrific. A couple of times last week in key matchups, key situations. Will beat a couple. And again, right there. And he wants to go on with it, Bruce. Good on him. It's that sort of match, isn't it? Yep. And if you bear a grudge from a week ago, here's Goddard. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> it looks like Goldsack is trying to take the Fisher match mm. up and. As we, as we can see, McWalter sort of trying to take the... Or oh, is Eddie? No, they're swapping over down there. Eddie's now trying to take the Maxwell matchup. But you've got to stay with them. You can't play as a forward trying to read the footy. Jolly later down. Jones fetching it, though. Just on the loose man in the defence for uh, Collingwood, whether it's Maxwell or O'Brien. You're, it's always going to be there because St Kilda have a spare man the other end. Yeah, so basically what they're doing is they're saying, we'll back in Fisher, let them have Maxwell. 
Jolly again wins the tap. Saints converge. Can't quite release the footy. And again, I think it'll be a ball up. So in that kind of tactical battle, it's a matter of which defensive forward does a better job. Yep. Is able to actually pick the time to, to play defensive forward and the time to be usable. What a contrast in styles. Six in front, inside 50s to Collingwood, just the one to the Saints. Knocked out of there by Jolly. McAvoy flicked it across. Schneider ditto. Gave it to Goddard. Searching kick inside the forward 50. Getting a fist on it, Reid. Falls to Shore. O'Brien on the assist. Gives it to Maxwell. He just thumps it back across the 50. Taken by side bottom. Now Blair is on. He'll have the football. Plenty of room to run. Blair. Left half back, kicks it up towards the wing. McCaffer comes to an awkward half volley. Kept his balance, McCaffer. Blair kept coming. Backs off. Blair under pressure. Chips short of half forward. Getting a fist on it, Fisher. And he puts it across the boundary line. That was a good win, wasn't it, for Goldsack? He made Fisher come with him. Fisher did the sport. Just the tactical battle. Both sides have gone with similar tactics they started the game with. I'm amazed that there wasn't more innovation from the lessons of last week. Hayes caught underneath it, and Jolly over the top, and then Hayes lays the tackle. Graham, side bottom taps back cleverly to Pendlebury, to Johnson, who was squeezed up. I think he might have kept it in, though. McAvoy had to search for it. It was a high ball, and Collingwood getting a little kick forward from Didac to half forward. Cloak and Dawson, here is Didac. That must have been Blair. Didac almost in a goal-scoring position for him. Oh. Goal sack, and then Goddard. So good again. Schneider through the heart of the centre, important ball. Shaw holds it up. And then Shaw, normally creative, asks a little bit of Lee Brown. Brown, quick enough to release. O'Brien, barely the 15 goal sack playing on the forward line at the moment. That's a good kick. Beams has got it just inside the 50. Johnson is on. Johnson's got it. So Kilda got the same problem they had in the first half last mm. week. One forward. Yep. If Greenwald doesn't get it, no one else is going to. In answer to your question, Lee, I think Goldsack's playing that defensive forward a, a hell of a lot better yeah. for Collingwood than Eddie down the other end. I still think, I know it might be obvious, but Gilbert's probably the man again for St Kilda well, to do it. Again, uh, St Kilda looking exactly the same as they were in the first half of the first quarter last week. Too slow. Huge kick this one. Ben Johnson runs to the 50. It's beautiful off the boot. How sweet it is. just been like a brick wall, hasn't it? That half-back line. I mean, the 50-metre line's one thing, but it's certainly as soon as the ball has gone into the forward half of St Kilda, almost inevitably, Collingwood are just rebounding it. Uh, they, uh, they do need an extra forward who can find the footy. Just on there, I mean, it's two-on-one. You're going to back in Heath Shaw and Harry O'Brien and yep. Nick Maxwell to make the right defensive decision to get to the out number. See Ben Johnson on there. He received the ball from Tyson Goldsack. Tyson Goldsack is playing that defensive role on either Fisher or Gilbert, depending the way it unfolds, doing that far better than Eddie and McWalter down the other end of the ground. What price that could Goldsack Goldsack, Johnson, the opening two goals for Collingwood. So they get the early break. Swan out of the centre. Brown in a wrestling match with Fisher. They'd like that, Collingwood. Having Fisher in a contest like that, Richo. Yeah, both teams have the loose men back, as we're talking about, but the difference is Collingwood's ability to get on the spread and run forward and create options for them to kick to going inside 50. St Kilda can't spread as quickly. Pendlebury was on his way, couldn't quite. Should be a free kick in the back against Baker. And this is good for Beams, getting hold of it a bit early. So good things happening for Collingwood at the moment. Slow Stop. kick, though. And got out again, as he did last week in the opening turn. Kept them in it in many ways, he and Fisher and Hayes. We haven't seen much of Hayes so far. Gwilt on the end of that from Montagna. A little bit of space now. Gwilt needs to use it. It was a strange selection, actually, going down the line, two and one, and he had the loose man in Peak who was shorter. And now Wellingham runs away from Peak and then kicks into the heart of the centre square. And now side bottom can attack. Comes out wide to Brown, 60 metres from goal. Plays on immediately to Shaw. There's a thumping kick. Takes something off this, though. Bounces it down towards full forward. 
of Dempster and across the line. Goddard leads all comers now with seven possessions. Just picking up where he left off last week. I think that was a sign of Collins' approach. When Simon Bonham was in the middle, he came out to the half forward flank. And they're not going to drive the ball long to that area, 20 to 30 metres out, which is that bombing distance. I think that's the lesson Colling would have learned from their approach early last week. Wellingham was wonderful moments ago. Won a big ball on the other side, outnumbered. High ball over the top. Brown claims the mark will be paid. It's great to back himself in the air, Brown, isn't he? Yeah. Really, especially from behind when he gets a clear sight of the ball. Collingwood again, don't have value for money, lead by 14 points, kick inside the forward line, Dawson comes up. That's the spot, they can't kick it, if they kick it to that spot, St Kilda will intercept it, that's that they've got to learn, Collingwood. Got out a sweeping hand pass, releases Montagna, takes on Cloak, high ball to the wing, two on one, Brown over the top, knocks it down in front, ball, O'Brien's been busy, back to ball, full chested, lacking support, but knew where they were, went back to Brown. Could have been taken high, no free Del Santo. Well played, Hayes. Good walk, O'Brien. First possession for Lenny Hayes. It's a brick wall there at the moment, isn't it? Mm. O'Brien's floater into the centre, beat all comers. Baker had it stripped off him by Gilbert, actually, unintentionally, obviously, and then Baker couldn't find the footy, and Gilbert and Colin would get a little win here. Oh, big, big win, win, actually. A big win. Big difference there, too, Bruce. They've been so clean, Colin. Would that time Baker a fumble? Bit rusty. Very early days, but I think Baker looks like that second up. Side bottom wide to Shaw. And then Shaw goes to McCaffer. Now, this will, now McCaffer's going short, but again, the intention there, Lee, that you talked about, not yeah. to bomb, but to be precise yeah, with the kick going that forward. That means they're going to have to go wide a little bit, but they actually, uh, certainly that area where Dawson marked that, uh, that footy that was kicked in a minute or two ago, that's the area they've got to avoid with those long kicks. 60 metres out from Collingwood's attacking goal at the city end then. One down by Kazetsky. Pendlebury had it ricochet off his body. Dug out of there by Ray towards the wing. Knocked down by Reed, who kept coming. Thumps it. Not to the advantage of his teammates, though. Graham Peak now a chance. Way. Opens up for the Saints. The Gilbert into the path of Montagna. They've got men back. Rebold in the middle. Calling for the football. Schneider. Will he give it to Rebold? He will. Rebold oh. runs in. Touched up the boots. Oh. oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? Wonderful chase by Heath Shaw. He came up behind him like a librarian. He never heard him. Oh, no surprise, everybody else in the library is shouting. He's got the football. That was as good a play as I've ever seen. Steady. That was impressive, Dennis. I think the thing was, Nick didn't have eyes in the back of his head. If he'd known he was there, he just would have gone back and kicked it from three metres out. Tom, I remember Harley one day at Skill Stadium. <laughs> Don't go off <laughs> half cocked. <laughs> Sure, back. Don't worry, Tom. We've written it down. <laughs> so Reed out wide to Maxwell. Oh, what a moment lost for the Saints. And it was the captain who fumbled it in the end. Make full credit to Shaw. Gold sack short to Maxwell. Collingwood would be feeling pretty good about themselves at the moment. Ball running hard. So Hayes quite early, ball getting a bit of footy. Goddard, a lot of football. Not a great kick, and Graham did well. Well, unfortunately, and unluckily, I think, didn't get it paid. Side bottom banging. Thomas, not quite. Might get a second crack. McCaffer kicks the goal. They've kicked the first three. And as all this is happening, Graham is in some serious... Oh, that doesn't look good at all. Yeah, he's, uh, I think, the old head on the ground when he came down from the mark, I suspect. But <laughs> certainly looks affected, looks concussed. Heavy spill. It's your ultimate turnaround, isn't it, with uh, Revolt going into the goal and the steal from Heath Shaw and then he goes down the other end of the pies. Yep. That's the, uh, the head on the turf. It's a very hard thing to <laughs> when you go ahead first into it. What a play that was. Revolt gets the goal at the other end. Eight points the difference. Now it's out to 19. McAvoy decisively. Who's there? Shaw. 
Just let the ball drop. In goes Hayes. And the umpire calls for it. Ball at the base of that. Yeah, wonderful bit of play. Yeah, no doubt about that. It wasn't, a, wasn't a fumble from Revolt. No, that was absolutely, absolutely outstanding. Team lifting stuff. I didn't mean literally the fumble. I just meant <laughs> making the wrong decision. Yeah. This is not, not insignificant, this, uh, to lose a player. That you'd assume he'll come back on, but you doubt whether he'd be at the same, I guess, mental alertness that he would have been if he wasn't cussed. Out of the congestion, Jolly launches towards half for Doors. Just rises, takes the easy mark. Everybody drifting back for Collingwood, but the kick is terrible. Schneider. Schneider of St Kilda goes towards the outer side wing, just dropping it in short. Gilbert. Over the top to Hayes, they work a little one-two and free up Eddie. Eddie, the defensive side of the wing. That's a terrible kick. Revolt made it look OK, comes back to Schneider. Schneider to Revolt, anxious to make amends. Not a particularly good kick. Now Reed, they can burst back. Rebound opportunity. Gave it to Thomas. Thomas comes up wide. Wellingham. Look at McCaffer run. McCaffer takes the mark 60 metres out. On the move is Cloak. And Cloak takes the mark. Will it be 50? I doubt it. So Cloak with the angle to open up to the left footer from the right full forward pocket. Enormous work rate from young McCaffer to push basically from centre half forward right to the flank. Able to get the ball onto Cloak. And Collingwood play the wing so well oh, and play yeah. wide so no surprise productively, don't they? Yeah, Collingwood's run early. Question is, so it's the goal or two. You get four or five goals in front. Yep. That just gets unmanageable even early. So Cloak, that's not going to be a goal. It won't be a score across the face. McAvoy takes the mark. Well, we talk a lot about Saints footy, under the pump, maintaining structures, not panicking. You feel like they've got to a moment here, don't you? Yep. Three goals down, nothing much happening, pressure building, need to get the scoreboard ticking. Can they maintain their nerve? Because at the moment, they're getting slaughtered here. Johnson probing kick to Thomas. Dal Sando put a hand up and then went off the ground. Important he doesn't fall over. McWalter, Jones, back in board. McWalter again, running hard, Gilbert, wobbly kick, revolt, given no chance there, and Goldsack, for not the first time today, does something good for the Pies. Now it opens up again, Pendlebury goes to half forward, to the right at the centre circles, McCaffers on to the far side, goes in that direction, will it get there in time? Yes, it does, McCaffer. Well, they're just ripping the Saints to shreds everywhere, but on the scoreboard. McCaffers is the sort of player that St Kilda would love at the other end, another target with a huge work rate that can also has the defensive values to put into the Collingwood defenders. Number 26 of the 06 rookie draft. Not bad value there as he kicks inside the forward 50. Off hands, boundary throw in. A minute 24 to go. Collingwood up by 19. Just at the moment, Collingwood got the same problem they had. They've had 15 inside 50s for only three goals. I mean, so they've stopped some Kilda scoring, but they're not getting great score themselves. Wellingham, and it's a boundary throw in. Isn't this so much like the first half of the first yep. quarter last week? Mm. Collingwood have just running some Kilda off their legs. St Kilda look like they've got Rewald or no one who's going to get the ball in their forward line. St Kilda are going to have to adjust a little earlier than half time, I suspect, this week. Well, the Saints were this margin behind during that first quarter. Collingwood were four goals to one at one stage. And then the Saints kicked those two late ones. Schneider, that very late one. Wellingham very good early here. Beams within range. Kicks to full forward. Holding his spot. Dawes was terrific. And then he legs Jones. But he's a strong man, Dawes. I mean, it took two to get him down. They are just hanging on, the Saints. I know it's early. But Collingwood are turning up the heat wide. Ray. Nick Revolt and uh, Nathan Brown, the only players in the forward half for St Kilda. So Farron Ray in the back half, wanting Nick Revolt. Goldsack with him. Oh. McAvoy took an eternity. Back to Gilbert. Runs the line, has a bounce, looks inside the forward 50, then goes short. Nobody inside the 50 for the Saints. Storming back is peak. Revolt sends it long towards full forward. 
Bounces through from behind. Well, effectively, they double their score. Johnson, meantime, whips it in, but I doubt they can go the length of the ground here. Pendle breather jolly. But Matt will do it. Jolly finishes up with a football. I know I said it last week, but no sign of the Jolly Wobbles. <laughs> and this is a replay. I can say it. Quarter time. <laughs> Collingwood 3 2. St Kilda 2 behind. Margin 18 points in the grand final replay. Firing quarter time in the grand final replay. It's 3 2 20 to two behinds. Goldsack, Johnson, and McCaffer have got the goals. McCaffer's seven possessions, Heath Shaw, seven possessions. And what about that smother on Nick Revolt running into an open goal? The centered ball had come in from Schneider. It seemed a goal for the taking, and suddenly, out of nowhere, Heath Shaw across his boot. Let's go down to Tim Watson now, who's got Stephen Silvani. Well, Sauce, the back line coach earns his money at the St Kilda Football Club. Yeah, well, um, look, you know, overall, we, they beat us in all our indicators and uh, we we're under pressure. Thought we probably steadied a little bit in that uh, later part of that quarter, but certainly we're going to have to get moving. Are you going to have to get some penetration through the midfield too to give your forward some opportunities? Yeah, I think we only had four or five inside 50s that quarter, so, you know, we're going to have to give our forwards a bit of opportunity, so we can't play um, the game in our back half. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Uh, Richard, can you tell us about the weather? I noticed both clubs went for the shade there at quarter time. We started the game with about 17 degrees. What's it like now? Yeah, out in the sun, there's definitely a bit of bite in the heat. And both clubs are concerned about it. They brought their huddles right over into the shade in front of the members' uh, grandstand here. For the Saints, I think they might have to make the move earlier than I thought. Gilbert has to go to half forward. They need someone there with a strong work weight that can attract the ball because Nick Rewald is the only target at this stage. Good on you, Matthew. So Collingwood lead it by 18 points. This time last week, the margin was six points. Here's Bruce. Good on you, Dennis. Swan, just the three disposals in the opening term. Stevie Milne didn't touch the footy in the no, opening term. And that point that, uh, Richo, it just seems so obvious that Sam Gilbert mm. is now going to line up in the uh, forward third for St Kilda. He did well in the second half last week, but I guess it was an element of let's not give Collingwood what they're expecting. Mm. But sometimes if you do it well, it doesn't matter what the opposite. Someone said once, if you can tell your opposition the game plan as long as you play it well. And that's the important part of it, Nick Maxwell going to Sam Gilbert. From what I saw last week in the game, he knew his way around a forward, forward yeah. line. He could attract the ball and again put on that pressure, defensive pressure on the Collingwood defenders. So great start for Collingwood. The only good news for the Saints here. The last three teams to have goalless opening quarters went on to win the grand final. And they're all against Collingwood. Carlton in 70 and 79, Brisbane in 02. The Saints fans need something to hang on to right now. Not sure if that'll help. McCaffrey went to ground. He had seven disposals in the opening term. Blake down low. Peak and Didak. Peak trying to win the ball. Does manage to get it forward. Shaw overran. Here is Gilbert. And Hayes, who only had the one disposal in that opening term, to Gilbert. Well, he kicked his first goal in the final last week. He doesn't quite straighten it. But he's made an impact immediately. Made, made things happen straight away. Still Collingwood were able to orchestrate a free man behind the play, which was Heath Shaw. Gilbert was forced to leave. Max would have pushed up on that. But he's got energy. He's got real intensity when he's around the football. O'Brien, a driving kick. Three on two favours the Saints. Shaw is up. Realistic according to the umpire. Close to the boundary line. Keeping it in, Baker, head down, slips a hand pass away. Hayes, oh, intervention, brilliant there by Jolly. Got a timely hand on the football. Down goes Blair. It was Fisher who applied a strong tackle. In goes Hayes, and the umpire calls for it. Just no, looking at that shot. To see the sure attempt here. Could have been a free kick, I reckon, but we're talking about the midfield matchups. It looks like perhaps yeah, Pendlebury is going to Hayes. Left his message before the beep. Knocked down, taken now by Dempster. Nowhere to go. Umpire Ryan calls for it again with a shade. Meets the sunlight. 
Thank you. It's a little bit of uh, <laughs> verbals going back to their positions after quarter time. Yeah, they're both antagonists. Uh, <laughs> it's been done before, it too. Is. Where's Mick? <laughs> Hurriedly onto the booth there from Pendlebury. Thomas finds a way through. Too nimble for McAvoy. Kicks inside the forward 50. Gwilt is the spare man. Holding on the jumper. He won't the be jumper. required. It's going to be a free kick to Black going against McCaffer. McCaffer has been dangerous on that forward line. Well, Thomas looked up and he saw Gwilt all alone, so he's able to give McCaffer a one-on-one. -on -one. So Gwilt Go. out wide. Schneider had a lot of the ball in the opening term. This is the place where St Kilda don't spread as well as Collingwood. I mean, they've got to hold on to the ball, whereas Collingwood, when they get these plays and they get the ball on the move, got plenty of midfielders pushing the space. So the slower the game, the better for the Saints, and the faster well, well, the game, the better so. for Collingwood. They bring it wide and slow, and they haven't gained any territory at all. From a purely statistical point of view, they only play on from marks about 17% of the time, so this is their build-up. This is yeah. Saints footy. It's a terrible kick coming out. From Blake, he knows Tim Watson. Lee's well, talked about it earlier in the game about coming up second time round for Stephen Baker again in a ball right down in front of us here on the boundary line. He fumbled. He just doesn't have his norm, normal short touch with the ball. And speaking of that, St Kilda's disposal hasn't been great. A lot of miscues when they're controlling the football. Had two and one on the wing. Didn't make the most of it. Montagna goes looking for the champ. Knocked away from Revolt. In front, Dempster back to Revolt. High ball down towards half forward. Coming hard was Peak knocked away by Shaw. Here's trouble for the Magpies. Milne, Gilbert. Is he accurate this time? No. He's got the goal surrounded. He misses to the left. Well, maybe should have just popped it onto Del Sando. Del Sando. I think uh, St Kilda would have liked the ball in Del Sando's <laughs> hand in that position. Let's just see Del Sando just to the screen. Yeah, just flick it across. I think he went back to Shepard. So Johnson to himself, and then he runs his full measure. Thomas, that's a wonderful mark. He's been good again, hasn't he, yeah. early? Really clean, really quick. Hold that, Brett! <whistles> Move it on! Plan! Short, low, 2v. No, no. Thank you, Brendan. Gee, the umpires have been good. Good common him. sense umpire, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Could have fallen for 50 there, and didn't. That's an awkward kick by 2v. Wellingham. Brilliant opening quarter. Hamble forward. Swan held his ground cleverly. Didac, Swan, Dempster, Swan. Wellingham with pace. Has to keep his head over the ball. He does and gets a free kick. Go watch his head. The reason Collingwood were able to win the ball back was they had numbers at the contest. So Wellingham wanting side bottom and Fisher getting back. Now he's got Gilbert out wide. Does not he change the look of the game? Yeah, absolutely. Gilbert on the wing, O'Brien closing, Gilbert just gets boot to ball, revolt the target, well done by Brown, gave a contest, got him out of bounds. He's really good when he gets there in the contest, staying with re-rolls the problem, but uh, when they're body to body, Brown's doing a good mm. job. Ruckman covering some ground here too, Goddard, Jolly just got there in the nick of time, Wellingham digs it out, over the football ball, could have been taken high, weathered the storm. Did brilliantly side bottom so good last week to half Orton Doors. Now Didak is breaking. Ball comes across to Blair. Will it get to Didak? Oh, good work by Cloak. Didak is on. Didak goes in. There's no repeat of Shaw. He kicks the goal. Well, that's their fourth goal, Collingwood. But after this stage of the game, it's almost their most important because some Kilda have had a good patch this first five minutes of the Second quarter, had a couple of shots of goal, missed them both. And almost, almost Collingwood's first entry, I suspect, they were they were good enough to uh, run onto it and get behind the St Kilda defence, which doesn't happen too often. No more dangerous player in the game at getting behind the opposition, I think, like that, Alan Dyder, absolute superstar. It's a good aerial shot, isn't it, really? Dodak is just flowing forward. They had the two-on-one. As long as the ball bounced nicely, <laughs> which it did, and uh, an easy goal, but they got behind the St Kilda defence. That was the key thing for Collingwood. They're just running power is on top. Well, they were 22 points in front last week when Cloak had those couple of shots for goal. That's where they are at the moment. They've got there quicker this week. Pendlebury back inside 50, side bottom. Started as he finished last week. He's playing so well. Dawson to Fisher to Jones, deep in defence. To Dal Santa, went without it, has to go back. Taken by Brown, up and high. 
Play on called. Bounce off the back of Baker. Fisher, well done. Hayes, Ray under the pump. High tackle. It'll come back. 50. No. Against Lee Brown. Where the footy was, Brad. Free kick off the ball. Where the footy was. Off the ball. Lee's given a few away, not our Lee, but Lee Brown. Yeah. It's yeah. Matty's third. Think... So Fair Becker right. does come to Ray. Well, they need the next goal, and that is so obvious, but must get it here, St Kilda. Well, the half-time last week, the margin was 24. But it took something special to get them back in. Ray towards half-forward. McAvoy, strong mark. Taking a couple. He'll flick it on to Goddard if he can. Still inside the centre square, McAvoy. Del Santo gets it, but right idea anyway. Kicks inside the forward 50. Rebolt, fingertips to it. Schneider wants his left side. Can't buy that dummy. Well done. Comes to Rebolt out of bounds on the fall. Schneider almost got away. Stripped of the football. Collingwood get it back. 22 points the difference. Not halfway through the second two. Jolly. Outside the defensive 50, McAvoy in from the side. Brown gave a contest. Del Santo claimed ball up. Contest is not such a bad result for St Kilda if they can keep it in this this particular pattern of yep. play. Slow things up a bit, playing to their hands. Again, Thomas tries third man up. Right. Got to take a chance. It's interesting, isn't it? It's four Adam goals. Adam. Four goals, two, six scoring shots to four. I mean, it's just St Kilda they're just not taking their chances at all. Good tap by Brown and then Swan chasing hard. So balanced. Revolt. Schneider. Still with Schneider. Goddard tries to crash through. Ray's handball poor. Taken by Montagna. Gets a bit on it. It's a chance. Oh, Speaking about taking their chances, Darren Jolly's actually come off at the moment, so Ben McAvoy's rucking directly against Lee Brown. If St Kilda can force the stoppage, you'd reckon that they'd be able to work their way out of it. Shorter himself, now he takes off, runs the boundary, gained about 35 metres, two on one on the other side, in front, almost the ball taken by Baker, the cavalry arrived quickly, Fisher jams it on the boot, Shaw again though, kept running, Shaw held up that time by McAvoy, jarred out of there, knocked by Gilbert, back towards Dempster, Dempster comes to Goddard alongside the centre circles, sends a high ball back towards half forward and McAvoy, but he won't get there in time, side bottom, drifting back. Beams is running hard. Will he be used? It'll go to him now. Beams stretches. Oh, that was a golden opportunity missed. Don't you get the impression with St Kilda? They've got half a dozen players they don't really want the ball with. They've got just half, like Goddard players like that, or they were fancy players. But there's a few that just can't do anything with the footy. So here is Goddard. Been fantastic again, yeah, hasn't he? To Ray, and then now Dal Santo. Stopped and prop, McWalter, as it was touched off the boot. Kaczynski with a fumble. Cozzy looks so slow at the moment, doesn't he? Tuvi cut off. Dal Sando, not a great handball. Oh. Kaczynski actually handballs beautifully, but to Collingwood. Now, Fisher down low. To Dawson. Now, here's Pick a chance Mike. for a switch. Now, Pete, Pete can run. He'll get it now. Gilbert. Gilbert is on. Oh, can he kick the goal? Well, Gilbert's had two shots for goal in this quarter and missed them both. And that one is missed again. Get the post. I'll tell you what, Sam Gilbert's work rate has just been enormous. You wonder how long he can keep up that intensity of running. He had a huge game last week from a work rate point of view. Again, running himself into the ground. Beautiful kick fights too. The, what was Blair thinking moments ago? Just went halfway and neither one thing nor the other. Saints with the football on the outer side. Plenty of numbers. Ray back inside the forward 50. Working at the back there was Johnson. Coming across on the angle is Gilbert. Playing a lone hand on the forward line. And that's saying something because Nick Rebold is down there. We've got a boundary throw in. But now they've got two. They've got Rebold who's making himself a target and Gilbert who's making himself a target. Hasn't had a break yet, Sam Gilbert. 39 minutes of the total game time. Right full forward. Brown. Revolt does the ruck work. Came wide of the pack over the football. I think it's ball in there, and we'll have a ball up. 
Tim, down to you. Well, Graham's still on the bench. We saw him crash heavily in the first quarter. He hasn't even stood up. He hasn't even gone for a bit of a run. So you've got to think at this stage they're down to three. It's a warm day. That's going to be really difficult for the Saints. Revolt over the top. Remembering they played with one short last week for much of the match again with Gardner out of action just before halftime. Thomas, Didak, just thinks his way through things. Wellingham, Del Santo gets involved with Dempster in his fifth grand final along with Schneider. Five grand finals in six years with a double up this time. We're into the next phase of the game now. That first initial speed has come off yep. the game. Now it's a much more brutal, almost hand-to-hand -hand, uh, combat. McPay is a little too cute there. That's got to be a free yep. kick. Not sure what page Lee is on. Just though. here. Just here. That's four against Lee Brown. Trying too hard to get the knockout. Sometimes it's a ruck when you just got to make sure you compete, but giving away free kicks, that's the worst thing. I think that's his job, as his name would imply. <laughs> just muddy the waters well, as the ball goes across to Fisher. Here we go. The game, meter shot. That's it. the game is in their right half. Right it's been in the, the Collingwood half, uh, sorry, the St Kilda just half of the ground the for the corner, past five right. or six minutes. That's Must capitalise. Coming yeah. up for his 12th possession. Of course, the game played very much on defenders' terms if they play for the Saints. But having said that, I mean, last week at times, it appeared as if it turned up at a Collingwood team meeting. <laughs> they were kicking it to him. This time a teammate has kicked it to him. 52 metres out, gets underneath it. Oh, my goodness. Seven straight behinds for St Kilda. And the irony in all of this is that Collingwood's accuracy has been a talking <laughs> yeah. point all year, hasn't it? They've got two rush behind Collingwood, so they kick four shots at goal for four mm. goals. I just feel that that's going to be vital at the end of this match. The match last week that ended up being played in centimetres, wasn't it? Shaw's kick again, and <laughs> Thomas... Squeezing the boundary. Can I say it, Dennis, that kick? Yes, please. Centimetre perfect. That's special, Bruce. <laughs> so, Tuvi running, drawing. Maybe not a good idea for McCaffrey. He's back sore suddenly. Down low. Well done by Ball. He started really well. And then Thomas under pressure. So yep. the Saints have had a good little patch. They just can't get a goal. Yep. You almost sensed that ball was going to be hit out of bounds eventually from the pressure. Started with the Hayes tackle. He's starting to will himself back into the game. Inside 50s to this quarter for Collingwood. Eight to St Kilda. So we know St Kilda are getting within scoring distance. So Gwilt forced to kick high. Asked to play on. Ray front spot. Oh, Revolt's got it. Well. 60 metres out. Got up steep. Wheels around. This has got up spot. He's got oh, it. Kick. It's a free kick. Tools good play by Goddard. Oh, he's a special player, he, isn't he? He saw that uh, Maxwell had the position. He pushed back hard, and when he pushed into Maxwell hard, that's when just an incidental high contact. Let's have a look at this. He pushes back, just the arm across the shoulder. He certainly made it uh, <laughs> seen. Well, this I is, guess it was there. This is the ultimate test because this guy doesn't miss and they have been missing all day. Nah, he gets it. They needed it, and the right bloke at the right time. Well, to win, they got four goals clear, Collingwood. You know, one more goal is five, but now St Kilda got that goal. So all of a sudden, a two-goal margin, I mean, the game's... A and I think it's interesting that just the pace of the game and the way the game was played in the second half last week when St Kilda played well, the game is now back into that kind of tempo. Just have a far more potent structure going into their forward line. I know Gilbert's playing a particular good role, and obviously Brendan Goddard can play forward also. Brendan Goddard, he has been drifting forward this quarter, and it was the first time they've been able to get it to him one-on-one. -on -one. Every time he's gone forward, go. Nick Maxwell has gone with him. In fact, now he's gone with him all over the ground. After 43 minutes, it was like wedding for Goddard. The hand pass comes across there, taken by Graham from Hayes, but Blair with the outside of the boot. Quilt had it knocked away, not paid. Down goes Beams, kept it alive. Swan went to ground. Terrific by Dawson. Quilt under pressure. Jones the fumble. Didak so dangerous. He misses. <laughs> Barely scored a behind, Alan Didak. Well, there's a handful of St Kilda players. They're in the game, but there's a handful of St Kilda players that just have been fumbling at ground level. Jones, Baker, just a couple to name a few. Just their ball handling under pressure, just a little bit sloppy. So Goddard to Blake. 
Shit. How many Goddards are there? <laughs> they might have to. They might have to take the Ard off the Goddard, I reckon. <laughs> I think so. Back he goes again to Gwilt. Now Gwilt's got Dempster on. Been able to get this going a bit. The Saints is Lucy. Now, Graham running hard. So Graham back on the field. A moment ago, he handballed to a Collingwood player. So I'm not sure how clear the head is, but he's taken the mark. This is a big win for the Saints if they can get him back into the match. And obviously, he's out there now, kicking it to about 60 metres. Revolt was at the back of Gilbert. Ball down low. Tuvi with a bit of pace. Held up, though. Blair did very well to Johnson. Released him on the right side. His left. Yeah, look short. Good to Maxwell, and then Maxwell with a long kick. Swan running hard. It's a behind. Now, Nick Maxwell did exactly what the opposition players should do to him. He's playing on Brendan Goddard. Brendan Goddard tried to drop back yeah, and fill the space, the short. but he drew the ball. Dane Swan just four possessions so far. That one tantalizingly close. McWalter, short of half back. Hayes has to wait. In the hands of the trainers on the other side, Tuvi breaks free of them now. Meantime, Hayes plays on. Comes across the ground in the shadows, Blake. Short one. Here's Graham. Graham off his step, Del Santo. 60 metres out. Del Santo good with the football in his hands, and that's beautiful. Bounces, though, off the chest of Milne. Knocked down by Shaw, taken by Sidebottom, grabbing the football with Schneider, went to ground, knocked away by Beams, taken by Dempster, tackled by Shaw. Close to the boundary line, Sidebottom, sweeping hand pass forward, well worked. Around the outer side they come. Thomas just loops it over the top, he got it from Reed. Gets it up towards the wing. Gwilt steadfast again, gets a hand pass away to Jones. Taken by Hayes, front arm, had it a long time. Maxwell claimed him. Free kick Collingwood, no play on the call. Gwilt comes back, Pete's got it. He has to make a decision now, does he go the long kick? Oh, he had Montagna right short, he went the wrong way here. Oh. And the bouncing ball, Jolly's onto it, still Jolly. Well, this is costly. McCaffrey kicks his second. <laughs> oh, you can see that unfolding yeah. when uh, Pete went across a long kick to McAvoy and the ball landed 10 metres in front of him. You knew he was in trouble. That whole, the Ruckman with the balls at their feet. And he had Montagna 10 metres away. Yeah. That whole passage of play, probably that 45 seconds, was typical of both clubs. There was huge pressure from St Kilda, then Collingwood got it forward, St Kilda won it back, turned it over, goal to Collingwood. It was actually riveting football for 45 seconds there. Great awareness here by Darren Jolly just to drop it in. Have a look at this ball that bounced in front of the Ruckman. The oh. oval, oval ball over his head, couldn't lay the tackle. Now it's an easy goal to Collingwood. The defensive mistakes, uh, that was costly for St Kilda. Well, if you want a snapshot of this game, two goals in the turn for Collingwood, both from the goal square. That's how it's being played. Jolly decisively. Pendlebury swings it down towards half forward, side bottom, lets it bounce, runs onto it. Thomas is on, uses him as a decoy, comes back to the middle, and Jolly! That was a terrific mark. The big guy had to change direction. Went back and found the footy, and it stuck. This is exactly what we know Darren Jolly's capable Lodge of. Forward. Centre clearance, it's actually six zip in favour of Collingwood at the moment. Pendlebury was the one who got it out, but Darren yeah. Jolly knows his way around yeah. the forward 50. McAvoy has to be aware of that. Remember Pretty important couple of minutes. Remember the second half last week when Kaziski was running, was rucking, Jolly was chasing him. Yep. But right at the moment, McAvoy is just uh, getting into defence, and Jolly plays that well. What an acquisition he's been. Melbourne to the Swans to Collingwood. This one is working back. It's beautiful. In the centre clears, Collingwood are dominating at the moment. I think it's six zip. Tell you who's playing a great game. That's Scott Pendlebury. Yeah, yeah. Quickly forward. Side bottom has been really lively uh, across uh, across half forward. He played this well the way he pushed his body back in. To Dempster. Mm. Great composure. 19 years old, the youngest player out there on the field, playing a really good game. It's good again last week, but uh, even better again this week. 
And he's Collingwood's only Premiership player out there, having played for the Swans in his first year. This is the biggest margin in either of the two matches. They're yeah. out to 27 now. And the first of those goals was a bad St Kilda error, so all of a sudden that tests the composure of the Saints. So Jolly won the tap a moment ago and then kicked the goal. So forward they go. It was a toe poke from Pendlebury. And now Swan to side bottom, goes inside. Gold sacks already kicked one. Back to side bottom, hip and shoulder by Dempster. Dal Santo on the wrong side for him, but he is skillful. Montagna, free kick to Wellingham, not paid. Oh. Ball comes back from Tuvi, back to Wellingham. Oh. Out on the oh. <laughs> That's testing it. Dominating the centre clearance at the moment, Collingwood at 7 zip and it's starting to translate into scoreboard. It doesn't always happen that way, but you get the sense that they're really dominating that part of the ground. And you can get the sense of Collingwood get the next goal. Good luck, Saints. Yeah, Saints were lucky twice there, back to back. Half chances, not quite materialising as far as Collingwood were concerned. So Fisher, deep in his own defensive area. Backs to the wall in more ways than one. Drives it to the outer side. Clears the pack. Peek arrives. Hand passes into the oncoming Thomas. Thomas dances. Gets it across to side bottom. Kicks to the 50. Blair feeds it back. Hard against the boundary line. Sure. Over the top cloak almost. Goes after it. Conceding it behind was Dawson. And who could say there was no pressure there? <laughs> They're swamped with pressure, St Kilda. It's coming out of their ears. So Goddard, Dal Santo, Goddard, Montagna, Montagna off one step to Graham. Got to think their way through this, the Saints, don't they? Wide, revol, has to half volley it, and then almost ran into Dempster, back, Montagna. They are on the back foot as they were last week a lot. Peak having a poor first half, gold sack, back to Pendlebury, having a very good first half. Grilt, terrific. You can just see now the minds are willing, but the bodies are they're starting to be mistakes because there's that slight little bit of fatigue. It's got, got to be there earlier in today's game than it uh, is in your normal grand final, let alone last week's. Another goal, and you get the feeling the Saints will be on their knees, and Collingwood trying everything at the moment to force the issue. Graham out of the congestion. Kaczynski was tackled. Over the football is Hayes. He's taken to ground. Deadlock. Collingwood supporters even like that. Down the woods left half forward. 6-5-1-7. The seventh goal could be the tipping point. Brown taps it down. Goddard heard the voice, went to Hayes. He hand passed across towards Ray. Had it no for a long time. Out. 14, Jared Blair. Heard the umpire. Max Hudson in black and white. He was the story in the grand final last year for at least a week. After the grand final, this man was. Luke Ball on the wing, short to Johnson. Collingwood can afford just to slow the game down. What are we at? Uh, just under four minutes to go. They can control the tempo of the game, just reserve a bit of energy because they'll need it in the second half. So Johnson hugging the line. He had a couple of players loose, but they're a long way away on the other side. Doors. Is it paid? No. Might have been a bit stiff. Wellingham getting through brilliantly, but not a great handball. Montagna just pushing the ball forward down the line. Reed, well done to Ball. Ball looks up. Can he deliver? He kicks to 50 metres. Cloak was held on to for a moment, and Baker comes across and takes the mark. Reed's hurt himself by the look of it. Rolled his ankle in the tackle there, I think, Bruce. Ooh, that's big. Brown. The pinch hit Ruckman comes on to be a key defender, at least for the moment. High ball in the Brown direction. Good That's punch. pretty good. Thumped it forward. In front, Jolly cast in the roll of a rover. Cops it up, though. Del Sando. She had it a long time. McAvoy looked like the old 360 lead. McAvoy is tackled by Dybat. Umpires let them play and play and play. McAvoy goes across towards Graham. Great He's confronted. That's your opinion. We'll have a ball up 60 minutes out, Tom Harley. Great umpiring, Dennis. Just let, let it go. You know, there's some fantastic one-on-one -on -one contests out here, and they just wheeled it through, and the umpires adjudicated that a treat. The grand final ambassador always says oh. the right thing, doesn't he? Yes. But it was. It was terrific stuff. Peak down low. 
Thomas. Well played, Thomas, against the odds. Kaczynski, well, too slow to move. Died out. <laughs> then Hayes to Dawson. No time and space. Back inside, Dempster and Eddie. Oh, gee, Hayes Please threw one right back there. Mm. Unlike Lenny. Serious stakes here, Bruce. He must oh, serious stakes here. Again. I reckon he said to uh, Lenny, I reckon Brendan deserved that Norm Smith last week. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lenny did plenty, don't you? Hayes in hard. And again, it looks like being a ball up. Oh, it's going to have to be physical. Yeah, just both the big players for St Kilda, Kaczynski and McAvoy, when the ball's at their feet, they're almost no value. Mm. And that's the, just the Achilles heel for St Kilda compared to Collingwood. Rucks go at it. Knocked down by Jolly. Ball. Hand passes Goldwood. Leading back is Dawson. Needs to be clean and wise. Dempster. Wilt. Wilt the high ball towards the wing. All Collingwood. Needed somebody on the ground. Well, too slow there was Del Santo. The umpires have put the whistle away on holding the footy. Upended his ball, and the ball's gone out of bounds. The two twelves, the two mates, and they're at it. <laughs> Jesus, nobody, some shadow can, <laughs> nobody can be trusted. <laughs> some shadow boxing going on out there at the moment. Move it on, on. So off one step, Dal Santo. It's a free kick. Got our free kick off the ball. Got our free kick. Got out. So I think against Maxwell. Maxwell. Now Montagna running hard, 60 metres out, centering kick, big fly oh, came from play. Jolly. She's played a quarter, Jolly, hasn't he? Oh, good, play. good play by Kaczynski to get in there and be the target. Mm. Great defensive ruck work by uh, Jolly. I often said ruckmen don't usually defend as well as they attack, but that was terrific by Jolly. And you feel like Gardner's being missed now, don't you? I mean, a fit Gardner, I know. Mm. That's hypothetical stuff, but uh, Jolly having a huge impact. Eddie brought down by Goldsack. Beams has to go backwards. Shaw. Schneider. Brilliantly done, Schneider. And then a high ball. It's all Collingwood. And Swanee, who's had a, a quietish first half, takes the mark. Speaking about Darren Jolly, Collingwood have been able to orchestrate that spare man behind the play all day, but they're doing it with a ruckman this time, so slightly yep. less conventional than they have in the past. Probably just reads off the field. Yeah, that'd be it. Clock running down to half time inside the last minute. Pendlebury drives it outside the defensive 50. Saints have to kick a goal here. Del Santo feeds it back. Goddard slips it away. Gwilt has it. 30 seconds to go. Centering kick. It's all Saints. They queue up. And Eddie takes the mark directly in front. Schneider is no, on. He'll no. go to Schneider. And Schneider is marked about 30 metres out. Well, he's got a good record in grand finals. He always kicks at least one, Schneider. He's kicked five goals in his four grand finals before today. Eddie, well done to Schneider. Well, we often say, Lee, these are big kicks. Well, this is massive. They've got to take every shot, St Kilda. They don't look like getting a lot of them. So it's half time here at the MCG. Not going to come back. And the Saints are one goal late at half time in the big game against Collingwood, six goals, five. So it was 24 points last week. Today, it's 27. Can the Saints come back again? It's 41 to 14 in the grand final replay. Time in the grand final replay of the Magpies on top. They lead 6 5 41. St Kilda 1 8 14. McCaffer with two goals. Ball enjoying himself, having a ball. 14 possessions, side bottom. 
another great game today. He was terrific last week, 14 possessions. Goddard has been quite outstanding with 19. So many highlights in the first half with the boys again to dissect what has happened. And let's begin with perhaps a point that steeled Collingwood. The run back by Heath Shaw, throwing himself across the boot of the St Kilda skipper. I think I actually declared this the best piece of, bit of play I've ever seen, and I'll stand by that. He's come from a long way back. He's actually taken the ball off Nick Revolt's hands before he's had a chance to get the ball. Went down the other end, so it was a double whammy for uh, Collingwood. It was a fantastic effort. That was a goal that was uh, denied. Great morale for Collingwood. Shocking for St Kilda. And the courage of Nathan Brown to actually leave Rewalt, just knowing that someone was actually going to try and put some pressure on, uh, on, uh, on Rewalt. It was just fantastic play all round. Now what about Scotty Pendlebury? He's never had 30 possessions against the Saints. He's well on the way this afternoon. He's having a blind act. Yeah, he's had the 13 possessions. I reckon he's doing a bit of a run with job, not a strict tag on Lenny Hayes. He's got the, the uh, he's got the numbers up on Hayes at the moment. His work in the clearance has been great. Collingwood are dominating the centre clearances, and Scott Pendlebury's one of the reasons why. If you get the centre bounce clearances, just so dangerous for defence, aren't they? That, that St Kilda defend really well when the ball's in motion, but uh, when it comes forward from the centre, your defence is completely out of position. And Pendlebury leading the way, just around the top. His direction, looking from above, his direction has just been outstanding all, all the first half. Fair to say, 27 points, though, guys. Not insurmountable. One of the things that Ross Lyon said early in the game, we want to have 110 tackles. Remember that 100 last week? They've had 34 at this point. So their pressure to actually nail Collingwood when Collingwood get their hands on the footy, that's really going to be struggling at this point. It's going to be even harder in the second half, I reckon. History often says that a grand final tosses up some unsung heroes. Brent McCaffrey has been quite outstanding with two goals to the break and their most lively forward. You get the, you get the feeling that he's one of Mick Malthouse's favourite players and you'd love to see a McCaffrey at the other end of the ground. He has a huge work rate across the flanks. He almost sort of orchestrates the way Collingwood bring the ball into their forward 50 by leading to the flanks. Provides a lot of forward pressure, lays a lot of tackles. He's been one of the uh, shining lights for the Pies today. I think when we saw that last McCaffrey goal from the St Kilda turnover uh, across halfback, that was a critical goal because St Kilda had a bit of control of the game at that point. They certainly did. The, uh, the first 12 minutes of the second quarter, the Saints wrestled back, only converted one goal, but uh, that was a critical turnover without a doubt. So what are the moods in the respective rooms as we take a look below stairs, if you like, the margin 27 points at halftime, so much to play for, Collingwood on top, and I dare say they're daring to dream, but they can't dream too much, 27 points, more halftime activity right after this. Time in the grand final replay, Collingwood lead by 27. This is the second lowest half-time score St Kilda's in 80 years in grand finals. Collingwood kicked a single goal in 1960 against Melbourne. And the bad news, they only got 2-2 for the match. So, so much to do for the Saints. Let's have a look at J Jason Graham, who looked as if he was at down and out, but he did come back and got some disposal. So at least they're not going to be a rotation down, we feel. He had some, inf he had some influence when he came back on. You just see, I think he's actually hit the side of his head. His temple really flush on the ground. Looked underdone last week. He only had the 11 possessions. He's one of those guys who can provide plenty of rebound. But as I said, he actually contributed when he came back on the ground, which is a bit of a plus for St Kilda. Looks like he'll be OK, even though he was off the ground for that uh, 20 minutes or so. And Brad, they played the Gilbert hand a bit earlier today. Now, he had three shots on goal in that second quarter. He did. He played down in defence in the first quarter. Start of the second quarter goes forward and had an impact. Two shots. Could have kicked, uh, could have kicked two goals. Easy sort of misses, I suppose. But at the end of the day, he is still having an impact. And he is working very, very hard as a as a forward and, and a utility right across the ground. I would have really liked to have seen that done earlier. I think yeah. Wilt is a player who's really elevated his game in the big games in particular. And he's doing the role that Gilbert plays down back. So he provides the perfect... Uh, Gilbert, I talk about, provides the per 
perfect draw for Nick Revo. Well, they've been letting nothing out of Cozzy or McAvoy when they're not rucking. I mean, at the moment, as forwards, they're just looking too slow when the ball hits the ground and they're not marking it. And Lee, you'd love the luxury of Goddard being able to go oh. forward a bit more. He's done so much in this first half, but they still trail by 27. Well, he's been magnificent, though. They look like they've tried to get two beyond him at different stages, but his ability, he's, he's been the one St Kilda play, I reckon, that just come up this week at this point of time. And uh, he's been all over the field. But, yeah, they, they'd like a two or three of him, I think. Just has a great balance in this game. He's had the 19 possession, half of which have been contested. He gets half his rebounds, and they match up to his inside 50s. He plays it all. I mean, he's, you could argue a case he's the best player on the ground again, Brad. Oh, with, without a doubt, he's, he's been outstanding. And for me, it was the intensity you've seen in the interviews before the game. That's the focus that Goddard's had the last two weeks, and that's why he's performing at the top level on grand final day. Well, we are here last week. They were 24 points down. We know what happened. The job all in front of them here and it doesn't finish the season with the grand final replay we've got the international rules not that far away there's nothing better in Australian motorsport um, and nothing better that I've ever been able to achieve anywhere in the world driving cars it's an unbelievable race it's strategic um, it's one of the ones that you know it, it means more than anything to anybody in terms of um, what we all desire to do is to win Bathurst. Anticipation on the face of Mark Scaife. Jim Richards, Nissan, that's his car. I can't believe that. We've won the race, that's how it is. Comes across the line, he's down by a fucking supercar, he has now. Scaife and Lopez do it at Bathurst. And Mark Scaife will go back to back at Bathurst. He secures another Australian touring car title. And, you know, there's not many more special events in terms of that feeling of racing there and, and competing. Scape, sensational in the Super Cheap Auto 1000. Matt Scape, did an absolutely magic job out there. There's no better feeling in Australian motor racing. There's, there's no better feeling than knowing that you've been able to conquer a week at Bathurst and be able to win Australia's hardest race to win. And the bonus grand final means no break to Bathurst. They're on the mountain next weekend. All the action right here. You can see the times there. The Bathurst 1000. Tim Watson is down on the boundary. Tim, what news on Ben Reid? Well, he hasn't reappeared yet, Dennis. Now, we watched him at halftime. We both went down, Richo and I both went down to watch St Kilda and Collingwood come back down the race at halftime. He was five minutes after the Collingwood players. He was with one of the medicos. He actually looked OK. There was no heavy strapping. There is some suggestion it might have been his knee. It looked to me that it was his ankle. There's a little bit of strapping around his ankle. So, But at this stage, he still hasn't reappeared out on the ground. So I guess you've got to say that he's doubtful in the second half. OK, Richard, the margin was 24 points at halftime last week. It's 27 currently. I'll ask you the same question. There's a replay. What do the Saints need to do to win? Well, that's right. Last week, Ross Lyon pulled a rabbit out of the hat. He put Sam Gilbert forward, and it changed the whole dynamic got them back into the game. This week, not as simple. He's already tried that, and Gilbert actually played well, but just missed those three shots at goal. If I was Ross Lyon, I just asked for a lift from some of my senior players, namely Del Santo and Montagna in the midfield to get some run and overlap, give the forwards a chance, and then hopefully Revolt and Milne can take a hold of those chances. And I suppose it's a fair question too, Lee. Second week in a row, if they can see the first goal here, the Saints. They're over five goals down. Such a tough game last week. Tough first half today. Can they get back into it? Well, I think probably no is the answer. No, partly think of that because their energy level in their tackle count is so low that I think when, when Collingwood are winning the ball, they're able to break clear of the St Kilda pressure. Certainly, it's nine scoring shots to 11. So in that, that regard, St Kilda are certainly in the game. But hauling back a 29-point margin, that's going to be a massive ask. Your thoughts, Tom? Yeah, look, I agree totally with, with Lee. I think the, the flow of the game is with Collingwood. I can't see St Kilda really breaking, breaking down that wall every time they've gone forward. Gilbert's been important but hasn't been effective. He's also played every minute of the game so far alongside with uh, Nick Revolt. So you'd have to suggest they're going to tire as the game goes on. I heard you talking at halftime about Brendan Goddard, 19 possessions, possibly the best man on the ground from both teams. I tell you what, there's a story brewing as well with Luke Ball. 14 possessions to half time. What about a Norm Smith for Luke Ball? Wouldn't that be strange? Not strange, he's played terrifically well, but the irony would not be lost around <laughs> this ground. No, it would not. No, I think he probably has to find a little bit more, but certainly side bottom is interesting. A player that is not regarded necessarily as one of the 
top levels, but he's been terrific. Yep, again this week after fine performance last week. Start of the second half of the MCG. Bounce favours Jolly. Not a lot of the ball, but he's been good. Slaps it down. Kazetsky emerges with it. Hooks it to half forward. Revolt takes the mark. Lays it off. Schneider lines up. At the post again. That is about their third or fourth poster. Make it three. Schneider was through. That would have been the start. Shaw comes away. Couple of bounces. Short of the wing. Del Santo works in front. Knocked across the boundary line by Schneider. Deliberate. Oh, that's a tough call. That was a contest. Don't know what you're supposed to do. Not go for the ball. So here's your man, Den. Ball in the back half. So Schneider's kicked a couple of points. One at half time and one just after Goddard. Looks like Swan might mm. be running with Goddard, which is interesting. Swan only seven disposals in the opening half. Goddard 19. Jones had to wait. Swan brings him down. Certainly he went to Goddard, yeah. didn't he, in the centre square? Well, watch that one unfold. They actually, he did track him pretty aggressively. Nice to see the deliberate out of here. It's a bounce. Not sure you'd punch it deliberately out of bounds in your front half, yeah. but anyway. So it's a free against Kaczynski to Jolly. And now to Didak. And Didak gets some space and kicks to Dawes. Big strong man Goddard got back. Quilt terrific. Brown was lumbering in. Still lumbering Brown. And gets a little kick away. Gold sack back. Pendlebury. Ball. Left foot. Won't be a score, obviously. 30 metres out. Dawes at the back. Brown again. And then Toe pokes it forward. Thomas running on to it. And running it over Del Santo. He's been tackled. He's been tackled. Throw it in. And that says it all. I wonder how many match minutes can they get out of Kaczynski in the rut? Because he has to be the player, I think, that provides the impetus for St Kilda. Cloak tries to hook it down behind. Milne's got the football. Brown's got him. Finished high. Two steps. To him. One more step and it would have been prior. One more step. Wow. You reckon that's why he's called the anvil? That was a bone-crunching hit from Lee Brown. Jolly. Looking for Thomas. Gee, he's been workmanlike again today. Jolly out of the congestion. Wanders down towards the pocket. Back goes Goddard. Well, now that is an interesting call. Ooh, he's that allowed to go and pick it up. He's allowed to pick it up. <laughs> good call. Oh, uh, yeah, good enough. I reckon these umpires have made good commentators, yeah, don't you? <laughs> Tap from Jolly. Montagna and Jolly. Jolly trying to rest it away. And then Kaczynski. Stevie Milner was... Still without a kick in the match. Thank you. He'll thank you, Bruce. Well, he's had to play too deep, unfortunately. Well, he's, he's up and round this stoppage, actually. Sometimes they just won their one or two forward shorts and killed her, I think, in the, in the game itself. Jolly had a second crack, and then Johnson, Jones. Goddard's hands were good. Kaczynski getting involved, Schneider on hands and knees, ball started really well here to Thomas, and then Daisy goes and kicks it just across the face for a behind. You do feel we are one goal away from something, don't we? Gee, they wouldn't let it out, would they? They were fanatical, Collingwood. There's Fisher just taking the sting out of things in the back pocket to Gwilt. If the voice said forward line is your last, you know, your first line of defence, <laughs> Colin would take that to a new degree. That was wonderful pressure. Here's Dempster, opposite back pocket. Cacophony of sound out of the back pocket. Kicks outside the defensive 50. Shaw will fly. Get a fist on it. He had to do that. All Collingwood in front. Pendlebury. Doors from behind. Hit the pack hard. Hayes looking to find a way through. Went to Dawson. Hacked out of mid -air. Doors! Oh, that is Dawson! <laughs> It was almost bound to happen. It was just a pressure valve, and it was just released. Then St Kilda had no release out. They Collingwood still able to set up with Shaw free, or yeah. Jolly could come back, or any any player really. But they couldn't just get the ball out. And you just, with that swarm, you mentioned it, Lee. That first line of defence is for Collingwood is literally the first line of uh, the forward line for them, and it's just just a weight of numbers and a weight of pressure.
a number of Collingwood jumpers. They just, I mean, it was a, just a hat kick out of the air, as we know, but there's so many Collingwood jumpers. Every time a St Kilda defender gets the ball in his back 50, there was a Collingwood player laying a tackle. Well, the chant and the roar has started. It will be now. Five and a half goals. Willingham forward. Why not 15? There's the St Kilda bubble about to be burst. They need a big third quarter from this point on. Collingwood doing the attacking, doing the scoring. Didax little kick forward to Goldsack. Wanted to load it up, then did the team thing. Side bottom off one step. At the back, Cloak. Nearly Cloak. Got out wonderful from the front. Goddard's kicking it in, that's good, but he needs to be kicking it to himself, <laughs> doesn't he? I mean, he needs some, a target to bring it out of here. St Kilda is struggling with him, it's going to be a long one. Decision making. So Goddard goes long, O'Brien and Kaczynski, O'Brien front spot. And pass came from Schneider, now Fisher runs it up, Rebold is dropping back, oh, Brown right. off him, wins the battle again. Won the battle early there, made contact with yeah. Nick Revolt early just to get him off guard, and then, as a result, could dictate the play. And Fisher couldn't carry it any further. He had to kick it off a few steps. Johnson, too nimble, runs away. Jolly is on in the middle. Well, falls short of that. Coming up is Blair. Delusions of adequacy from the little man. Taken by Graham, only as far as Johnson. Now it opens up. He kicks it down towards half forward. Here comes Swan. Needs a deflection. Still going, Swan. Laid it down into the path of Doors. Tries to slap it on. Gathered by Goddard, playing his heart out. Taken as Jones. Beams. High ball. In front, McCaffrey. Surely. No free kick. Quilt. Tackled by Swan. Scramble. Brown applies a strong tackle. Down goes Ray. He's pumping away in there is Lee Brown. It's actually, it's, actually, it's, it's actually almost been a blessing in disguise. Ben Reid is off because they're able to play Lee Brown and Darren Jolly on at the same time. Yeah. And both can have real impact on the game. Hayes, third man up. Willingham rides it and kicks the goal. Well, that becomes a massive margin, only yeah. five minutes into the third quarter, but a 40-point deficit, grand final replay, St Kilda's energy levels just hasn't been able to enable them to break away, they've got half a dozen players who just look fumbling with ball in hands, all of a sudden, with hope, Collie would have liked to have the energy from this point onwards, that's just a great roving yeah. goal from Wellingham. You just, you just watch here, uh, Jared Wellingham just able to stand off the contest and hit it at speed. The St Kilda players look like they want to be stagnant around the stoppage. Collingwood allowed to run through with leg speed and break it open. And that's the key to the game for the second half. It looks all Collingwood. Back in the middle. Kozetsky up very high, hooks it down. But once again, Collingwood on the burst. Swan gives it to side bottom. Was looking for Blair. Gets his own ball. Slips it away. Head down Baker. Taken by Blair. Opportunity for Ray. Goddard strongly tackled. Put to the ground by Dawes. Over the top, the hand pass came from Del Santo. In the road there was Jolly. To the ground goes Pendlebury. And a ball up. Collingwood now are surging. And it's starting to look as if a 44-year-old hunger is about to be put on the waiting list. Coming away, Ray goes towards the outer side. Race into O'Brien and Peak. O'Brien tackled, hasn't got the foot, he will get the throw. Let's get out of 10. So O'Brien gallops away from Peak and then delivers to full forward. Swan waiting, Wellingham from the side. Swan's going to kick a goal. They're home, you would think. I know it's a long way to go, but they're killing them now. That's one of the things I think we wanted at the start of the game. Who would come off the replay best? Mm. And uh, I guess we're getting the answer now. St Kilda gave a little bit of a surge there early in the second quarter. Missed a few shots. Uh, but now the game has opened up. St Kilda are trying to lay the tackles, but 
uh, Collingwood. Collingwood speed away from the Younger contest is legs. now just uh, taking over. It's been a fantastic move to get Swan mm. towards Goddard. I mean, Goddard's still been good, but all of a sudden Swan's now starting to find his way into the game after a slow first half. Well, it is like a tsunami now. Saints footy is being unravelled in front of our very eyes. No trick to be pulled out the hat, you would think, at this point. Well, just got to get their hands on the ball and get it forward. They do it this time. Montagna two half forward. Kaczynski and Maxwell and Shaw belts it away. Every little thing a Collingwood player does from this moment on will be cheered just like that. <laughs> Moments ago, as Bruce called it, wonderful by Shaw. Up against the big body of Kaczynski. Took him on, boundary throw in, clears the pack. Jones at the back, slips a hand pass away. Fisher. Fisher drives it long down towards full forward. Collingwood lead in the race from all directions. Maxwell commits, left the ball behind. Well done, O'Brien taken high. Harry O'Brien to get the free kick. Harry O'Brien determined today to emulate his footy hero, Michael Long, to win a premiership. I doubt he'll win a Norm Smith, but he's been very good. Comes away. What a telling kick that is under the chest of Thomas. What we'll see now, Lee, is your, your term, I guess, the hope because yep. the hope's probably really dwindling for St Kilda. They just need to maintain the, to maintain the energy. Thomas down the line. Nilly Brown. McAvoy did well. And then Gilbert. Well played, Brown. Wellingham, clever. Boundary throwing. Yes, you find it's now. It's the fighting spirit of uh, St Kilda. That's all they've got. The, the mind might still be will willing, but the body will be struggling. But the Collingwood energy levels Come now on, that they've on. got a, uh, what, 46-point lead. It's going to be hard to overcome, wow. sure. McAvoy tries to lay it down. Eddie gets hold of Swan. Hayes, well done, Johnson. Ricochets off, though. Hayes and Eddie down low. And I think we'll have it again. Amelia Dane Swan. Against Hayes. Okay, free kick. off the ball yeah, against Hayes. Hayes off the ball. Lee. So, like Collingwood, Swan surging in the third quarter, isn't he? Yeah. Lenny Hay has just 11 possessions. There's Maxwell. Goes down towards half forward. It almost been a free to cloak. Didak. He's feeling it, Didak. Still he's going, Didak. Pushed across the line by Quilt. There's something special about Alan Didak. Just see Nick Revolt on screen at the moment. He's got to provide that hope. He's got to just generate some real enthusiasm for his charge. If he's not feeling it himself, he has to really have some really strong self-talk to project a positive self-image. Brown knocked it down. Thomas. Oh, Swanee. They've been getting a lot of the ball in the second half, Swan. So Reed back. Back onto his old foe and Kaczynski. Just no movement from St Kilda at the moment. Gwilt. McAvoy and Revolt the target. Belted forward. Brown involved. Didak again. And then Jones forces him over. It's interesting in terms of perseverance. Uh, Jones has gone on to the Didak matchup. Uh, so Swan and Collingwood have won that battle of uh, tactics in terms of Swan taking Goddard. Free kick to St Kilda. It's a hold. Free kick to St Kilda up there. Free kick to St Kilda. So as the wrestling goes Stay on. Out Stay out of it. Let him go now, sir. Let him go, please. So the Saints free kick. McAvoy's Going chasing. Needs to do, get to Graham. Now, Graham looks up. <laughs> he's got Revolt outside. Now, Nick's got to go all the way here because he's held up. Now, he's going to go to Kaczynski. Does he get him? He does. Well, that's the ultimate goal by stealth. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the mark. Get 20 players wrestling behind the footy. Opens up your forward line, doesn't it? Hope you've got 19 <laughs> against their 20. But it's what we were talking about before. Nick Revolt didn't get sucked into that. He's just really got to take this team by the scruff of the neck. Probably won't get the result, but at least be seen to be doing the right thing. Because he's been very accurate from set shots this year. And that one, he's kicked it. Just their second goal for the afternoon.
I thought... wonder what. I mean, it's at the 40 point margin. I mean, it's, it's just. You've got to be internal optimist mm. to think they can wind in, but they can't give up. So, therefore, it is just this mental battle mm. when all of a sudden we're behind. We're pro. Gee, this is a big, big margin, 40 points. But we can, we're fine. Can we get an extra two or three goals just to get back to three or four at three quarter time? That's really the best St Kilda can hope for. Terrible news for the Saints. Sam Fisher has just left the ground. He was clutching his right hamstring. He's disappeared downstairs with the Medicos, but it doesn't look good. So the margin, 40 points, approaching midway in this third term. Even the goals aren't convincing. It came about because of a blue. When I say the goals aren't convincing for the Saints, kick forward towards half forward there by side bottom. Opportunity for Didac. Smothers the ball, runs onto it, hooks. It's bending oh, back. Yes. Oh, Blake kicked it in to Didac. That was wonderful by the number four. Didac across the boot, but that wasn't enough. Went and found his own ball and snapped with the right foot. You know that bit of play, I think, just uh, emphasised St Kilda's problem. They've got too many guys that they don't want to kick the footy. Dawson, he bailed out the handbars to Jones. Jones bailed off the handball to Blake. And then Blake had his uh, kick smothered. A wonderful smother by Dodak and a fantastic finish. But St Kilda just haven't got enough players who they want the ball in their hands to run and carry. It's not a tackle here, it's a smother by Alan Dotto, but the turning point of the game, although you'd assume Collingwood had the ascendancy at halftime, they're actually eight to zip and forward 50 uh, tackles, which is their hallmark this year, and that's been the difference in the domination for Collingwood this quarter. Yeah. G Swan was brilliant there, he pickpocketed the ball off Ray, and then Thomas with a spear inside the 50. Blake and Goldsack. Blake keeps it in, and that one out wide to Peak. Peak away. He had a moment, didn't he, Peak, in that second quarter. McWalter comes in late. Sure, well, it surely looked a mark, but uh, it'll be a ball up. We've got a fantastic chase by McCaffer. Yep. Made Peak run and kick the ball in the air. You almost feel like Didax off the leash, don't you? <laughs> Celebrate with the crowd. It's a shimmy, I think. Revolt wins the tap. Dow Sando breaks the tackle. And then on the left foot, Collingwood with all the numbers. Milne gives a free kick away. And that is not paid. Still without a kick in this grand final, Steve Mill. Reed back and OK. OK, a relative term. Rolled the ankle. We'll be sore tomorrow. If, in fact, he can feel it. Here's Pendlebury. Drifted out of the game in this term, but so important early. It's the left half back in the bright sunshine. Drives it beyond the wing. Jolly settles in front. Loose ball at the back. Stolen away by Thomas. To his own advantage. Needs a kick. Kicks it from the boundary line directly to Gilbert. He's in trouble. Dragged down. Revolt favoured by the hand pass. Opposite direction, Graham. Revolt ducked into it. Now he needs to be careful. Is that holding the ball? Play on's the call. I think that's Blair who got tossed. He's tossable. And will have a bounce. There's three more forward 50 inside tackles. Over eight zip, and now it's 11 zip. To see Sam Fisher with a, uh, a crook hamstring from all accounts. But this swarm mentality the Collingwood is impressive to see. Jolly. And then Dal Santo, good tackle. Wellingham first up. And again, he had no chance, let him up. Yes, Thanks, different sir. sides have different hallmarks, and this forward 50 tackling pressure of Collingwood, that really is the thing that is actually elevated them above the competition. So Revolt doing the ruck work. Thomas winning the tap. Pendlebury, is he within range? No. Well, he was within range, but didn't have the range. The radar. So Collingwood, 46 points in front, deep into the Premiership quarter. And Gwilt from the back pocket. Hugs the boundary line in Collingwood fashion. Jolly tries to hook it down. Eddie did well. Revolt on the outer side. High ball. Peak is favoured by the kick. Had it slammed away, though. Rove by Goddard. Required at both ends. Into the path of Montagna. Race back with Johnson. Takes a Collingwood bounce deep to the pocket. Johnson <laughs> stole it away. 
across to Brown, back to Johnson. Johnson runs into a tackle from Eddie. Down he went, crawling after it, peak. Too slippery there for the man closest. Eddie had came to McWalter. Into the path of Hayes. Hayes with the outside of the boot. That's a hard-working tradesman's goal. Initially, it's really good work there by Ben Johnson from Collingwood to track the ball in, get a break even, then uh, just the will force and the willpower of Lenny Hayes. Hasn't quite had the game he had last week, the 13 disposals. Goddard leading the way with Collingwood, uh, sorry, with St Kilda with 22 at the moment. Need a lift from Montagna. Richo mentioned that at halftime. He's only had the 10, pos 10 possessions, so definitely backs against the wall stuff for uh, St Kilda. It's one of the rare times in Kilda have got a ground level goal, but there's going to be space in their forward line if they can get it there because Collingwood pushed so many players upfield to uh, defend from their forward 50, and Hayes who just keeps getting there, but uh, most of the time when the ball's come to ground there, Collingwood have got it. So McAvoy now in the ruck, got over the top. Back to Dal Santo, good tackle from Wellingham. Swan, peak. Picked it pretty well. Back to ball. Brilliant handball. Wellingham to Swan. Controlled the kick. Oh. Brilliant Swan. Hasn't he been important this quarter? Engaged Goddard. Dane Swan we're talking about is engaged Goddard. Got the centre clear. Although he only had the 21 disposals last week, he had nine centre clearances or nine clearances. That's his best work, breaking away from the stoppage. More important, he's dropped the Jones tag, mm. and he's had the willpower to actually stay with Goddard and up to drop Jones off. Well, Didak with a couple of goals, Swan with one. Cloak, they're probably three of what you would think they're match winners. Quite his first halves, all of them, but getting on the board in the second half, Cloak just kept it to the near side. But you feel like that's one behind that's not going to feel like it'll come back to him tonight. It's 10 goals, 8 to 3 goals, 9. Collingwood have reached their total of last week. That's in Kilda's total. Goddard straight down the middle. Desperate times. Oh, terrific mark. McAvoy, the big man, launches himself. He's got it alongside the centre circles. Del Santo goes down towards half forward. Well, weighted kick. He's getting it over the head of Thomas, taken by McWalter. Keen to go to Gilbert. At least initially, now decides against that. Yeah, and they win. skirt the perimeter, getting back goal oh, set, took the arms, advantage is paid. Hayes across the ground to Baker, very casual. Baker met by side bottom. Was that a push in the back on McAvoy? No. Hand pass from Shaw, deflected by Eddie, swooping on it. Nicely worked by Hayes to Schneider. Schneider goes out wide to Goddard. What a game he's played. No. Goddard hooks it down towards the pocket. Milne completely outnumbered. Well, made a nuisance of himself. Peak at the back of the pack. In goes Reed. Falls on top of Montagna. And we've got a ball up. So Goldsack a bit wounded here. Good effort and kick the opening goal of the match, goal sack. So, McWalter's kick just too tall for Del Sando and then problems for the Saints. Del Sando kicks forward. Thomas just has to sit and wait. He does. And then kicks the ball towards the boundary, wants it to go out. Ray with a bit of time here. Can he deliver? No. Nah. Oh, Thomas Brown like a goalkeeper. And then McCaffer building it out of the back half. Dawson and Dawes. Oh. And the big D wins out. Back inside to Pendlebury. Side bottoms on. Oh. What about that passage of play with Dawson? Uh, Dawson, I think it was. Dawson just looked deflated, didn't go at the ball full gust. That actually was three on one at the time. Oh, we just see the turnover here by Dale Thomas. He's playing a hell of a game yeah. again. Talk about players elevating their reputations oh, yeah. in the big game. Dale Thomas. This one, last week and this week, he's been magnificent. If you had to combine Norm Smith, the two matches, he yeah, might be in front yeah. right now, along with Goddard, I guess. Yeah. Playing a fair on, game, too, still side bottom, no doubt about that. Well, he's the only teenager out there. Murray Wiedemann, one of the three living captains, is the youngest ever Premiership player at 17 in 1953, and side bottom kicks another one. And Collingwood get past 10 goals today. All started with that that, that ball from Farron Ray. The, uh, Thomas actually kicked the ball out wide. Farron Ray got it, but he uh, he tried. This is actually the uh, the flow of 
play out of the Collingwood defence. Great win then by Dawes. Once he won the uh, won that contest, well, Southbottom was just took off. young player he is that rare <laughs> blend of will and skill and he gets the goal the 11th for the magpies Hayes that's holding the ball holding the ball not legal handball Swan have enjoyed that just looks across the ground lobs the ball into the path of his playmaker teammate Pendlebury comes back now Reed up towards the wing McCaffer when it counted he was sensational McCaffer down towards half forward. Doors has not stopped presenting. Off hands. Hand pass from Tuvi. A little untidy. Schneider. Well, even then, McCaffer got him and goes again. McCaffer. Pendlebury forced to kick with the right foot. A high one down towards the half forward flank. Holding free on. Kick being held. And the advantage of presenting Chris and Dawes getting in front. Yeah, and Doors gets it through. Your arms are in his waist. He can't jump. Come back. Thanks, Brendan. The holds there. He's just a man, mountain of a man, Chris Dawes, and it draws the uh, the contact from his opponents because he controls so much space and does it so well for a young player. Doubt he can get the distance from here. Kazitsky is back in the goal square. You can see him on the kickoff line. Cloak is there. Dawson is there. Just centers the ball for Cloak. Over the top, Kazitsky, though. Long time to wait and think about it. He did well to come up and take the mark. He realised Dawes, if he tried to kick it, it would have landed on the goal line mm. and an easy rush behind. Which he did a bit last week, yeah, didn't he? He took those long shots. Week. Eddie runs into the back of Maxwell. McCaffer, terrific match again today in a big contest. Milne tried a little toe poke. Peak goes back. And then Dal Santo with that control foot to Eddie. Eddie gets on his bike and then kicks to half forward. This is the sun problem that Brad Johnson oh. talked about at the start of the match. Reva Montagna. O'Brien brings him down. And then Brown's little kick clever to Shaw. And then Shaw looks up and controls the leg to side bottom. Just been able to get the ball out in space so well, Collingwood. Even when there's a contest, someone will punch it out to get it out into space. So the younger, fresher legs, which have been really pivotal in the second half for Collingwood. Well, Dane Swan, as we said, quite his first half, having a terrific third quarter back to shore. It's not a bad thing having an Uncle Tony in big-time sport. Rafa Nadal's got an Uncle Tony. It's worked well for him. Shaw out wide. Just speaking about Dane Swan, hasn't had the huge possession tally, but he, importantly, he had 10 tackles. Yeah. Second most for the Collins players. He's hard inside. Oh, he just absolutely. hasn't had the... Uh, the high disposal count get used to during the year. And Shaw got it from Beams, drives it around the outer side. Brown launches himself, crumbs his own ball. Swan just relishing the freedom now, gives it across to Johnson. Johnson hugs the boundary line on the outer side. Ball goes after it, lost it, knocked away, and it bounds. And there is Uncle Tony Lee. You did a lap of honour with him today. He did, Collingwood was uh, Premiership captain. Looks like the title might be about to uh, last Premiership captain. Total about to be passed on. Remarkable dynasty, aren't they? Close to the boundary line, it goes out. Heath's dad played in four losing grand finals and a draw. I think from memory, captain in a couple of them. And he's played a heck of a game. Last week and again today, Heath Shaw. Been wonderful, hasn't he? Collingwood pushing forward. Cloak brought down by Dawson. Pendlebury. Wants something of Jolly, Gwilt with him, and a boundary throw in. So Jolly, who went to the Swans in 05 from Melbourne, first season at the Swans of Premiership, comes to Collingwood in 10, along with Ball, and seemingly history's going to repeat itself for the big guy. You reckon he might be hot property on the trade table this week, Bruce? <laughs> Untouchable, I think. <laughs> You've got to say, the Jolly Ball pickup yeah, was a good yeah. one. Oh. Gave them by particularly Jolly, they, were, they didn't have the big Ruckman, Collingwood. Jolly is a good quality big man. So Gwilt. <laughs> Bangs it as far as he can. Blake, good mark. Back inside. 
to Ray, looked up, had nothing really. He's got Revolt, but he's in an awkward position. Brown at the back, did well, doing the roving though. Was Kaczynski, Moon goes forward, that's his first kick. Shaw getting back, McWalter behind him, and he's Shaw happily sees a go over. Well, there's always a hard luck story, and that yeah. guy, who they love at Collingwood, don't they? Presti is the oldest player that was selected last week, and he decided that he wasn't fit enough, and today he's sitting it out. And a boundary throw in, in his neck of the woods. No pun intended. Hurriedly off the boot by Revolt. Jolly, towering kick. They all settle underneath it. Some misjudgment there from Goldsack, and Gilbert just drifted in and took it. Yeah, Swan tried to hold him out of the marking contest, but uh, Gilbert shrugged the, the block off. Right where the emblem is. Well, his kicking has been wayward today. Had some golden opportunities when he went forward, just three behinds. And I think all of those eminently kickable in the second term. Here he is, looking to make amends. Guides it and guides it well. It's through for a goal. He might make a forward. I mean, he's a wonderful defender, and but, he, well, but I'm thinking long term. He has been very good. They didn't start him down there, of course, but in the second quarter, he had the two or three shots at goal. And the best patch of the game that St Kilda had was early in that, uh, early in the second quarter. And his, uh, they really have, against the Collingwood defence, uh, Brown's done well on Rewald, and none of the other St Kilda forwards have just looked like getting the ball much against the Collingwood defence. Just see Scott Pendlebury on screen. He only had the five kicks last week. He's up to 16, 22 disposals, 11 tackles. He's been absolutely instrumental for Collingwood in the midfield. Could one quick goal here make a difference? Pendlebury cut off, not 15, back to Hayes. Hayes belts it forward. Revolt trying to get off the leash. It's been a hard leash to get off. Gee, Brown stacks is growing by the minute, isn't it? Back to Maxwell, the captain. And then Maxwell delivers down the line. And Jolly comes in and takes a mark. And he'll savour the moment. Biggest margin ever overcome to win at three-quarter time is 23 points. Essendon in 1984. Sorry, Lee. Thanks, Bruce. And yeah, then Maxwell. Fun. Tim likes that one. But Collingwood led by 27 in 1977 yeah. in the drawn game. Seven goals is should win territory. Ten goals is will win. Yeah. Uh, so at seven... You know who I like to be on, that's for sure. Maxwell, you're a careful punter, Lee. No, I used to think that. <laughs> well, they went on with it, didn't they, Collingwood? They increased the lead. They have put themselves so close to touching the Holy Grail. At three-quarter time in the grand final replay, it's Collingwood 11 8 74, St Kilda 4-9-33. Grand final replay, the margin is 41 points. What about that succession plan? I think Eddie perhaps pulled the wool over our eyes. He was talking a success plan, and one of those members of the succession plan is Nathan Buckley. He's with Matthew Richardson. Well, Bucks, you're 41 points up. Last quarter of the year, you look to have it won. What was the message from Mick? Ah, oh, look, it's just more of the same. We've, uh, we've been very good. Our structures have been good for three quarters. That's why we're in this position, so we need to do it for another quarter. It's going to mean to you to be a part of a Collingwood Premiership. That'd be fantastic, and you know, all credit to the 22 blokes are there at the moment for doing three quarters of the job, so let's finish it off. And the fans, mate, they're going to go berserk. It's going to uh, lift the roof off this place. Yeah, mate, we'll worry about that in 30 minutes. Good on you. Good luck. Brendan Goddard's got 24 possessions. Scott Pendlebury up to 23 now, and Luke Ball has got 20. And Tim Watson, that's a heck of a story. It is indeed, Dennis, and both uh, he and Jolly have been magnificent. But this time last year, Luke was, in fact, a saint. He agonised over that move, believing in the end that it was about opportunity and having a coach who really believed in him. And we know that in last year's grand final, he was used sparingly against Geelong. 
I mean, to Luke right now, I've known him since he was a kid, it must look like a mighty great decision that he's made. So eleven eight plays 4-9. Bucks working one quarter time there with Richo, wasn't he? Well, obviously everyone else in the ground probably thinks Collingwood's home, but not the Collingwood <laughs> coaching box. I guarantee you they won't think they're home. You can't think that way until very late in the game. When will they do the walk, Lee? Your, Lee, your walk was very famous in 1990. More goals in front than minutes to go, Tom. <laughs> Righto. That's the one. <laughs> well, they're already... Well, no, they're not there. There are more points in front with minutes to go, but, well, it would take a miracle. Yeah. It's been a good year for Saints in Australia, but they need something, don't they? Mary McKillop and all that, but I'm not sure <laughs> if uh, if they can produce something that she had to do reach the exalted heights that she's about to. We spoke last week, they pinched a draw, didn't they, St Kilda, with only 35 inside 50 entries, which is incredibly low. Well, today, they've, uh, they've only had 28, so they just can't get the ball forward enough against the Collingwood defence. 30 minutes away from a 15th premiership, you would think. Collingwood playing its 500th match at the MCG. The first back in 1897. Tuvi out of the centre. Kicks the ball inside, not quite inside that forward 50. Gilbert deep for a moment. Had it stripped and robbed. Side bottom's been good. Back to Jolly. And then Jolly uses Johnson, and Johnson's long kick, not great, but gets over Kaczynski. Hands were OK from Dawson to Jones. Jones probing and fishing a bit. Peak, Jones. They're going backwards, and the kick picked off by Tuvi against Schneider. Back in board to Johnson. Classic Collingwood, though. St Kilda just got boxed in in that forward pocket and forced the turnover. Tuvi back. O'Brien was running outside, he goes to the pocket and Dawes has got it. It's a good kick. And to follow on, just the pinpoint pass along the boundary to Dawes. Yeah. I mean, they've had that, when you've got to try and run the ball out of defence, no other team in the competition really has been able to do it against you long. Uh, but uh, again today, St Kilda, as soon as they've got into handball, handball in their back 50, it's probably going to get turned over soon. Well, he's one of the success stories. He's one of the reasons yeah. they've improved, haven't they? The structure's better with him forward. Reed at the other end's been very good. We know that Willingham and McCaffer and side bottom and beams have continued to emerge. Tuvi's a better player, but this guy's been a very important part of all of it. Oh, how sweet it is. <laughs> he has got a presence, hasn't he, Dawes? He's a big guy. Well, he takes, he takes a key defender, and he's very good in a one-on-one -on -one contest. Last week, they had the 62 forward entries. They went to him eight times. The next best was Travis Folk. So, as a team, they have real confidence in kicking the ball to him in a one-on-one -on -one contest. And he stands up, and he does the basics pretty well. It's a sweet moment, isn't it? When you kick a goal, 8.8 .8 goals clear now, early in the last quarter of the grand final. It's a great moment. Back in the middle. Play on, Another play Ruckman on. touched the ball. Swan slaps it forward. Graham gets back. Some indecision. Jones sold into trouble, did well. Kicks it towards the outer side. Jolly tracks it back. Awkward bouncing footy. Smothered off the boot there. McWalter's kick went straight into O'Brien, and O'Brien finds a way through. Well, almost dragged down. Kicks it out wide. Del Santo goes back and takes the mark. Del Santo at left half forward. Says something about the respect we have for the Saints. You keep thinking, well, they're not quite dead yet, but gee, you'd think so. 60 metres out, long down towards full forward. Big pack at the drop. Brown just slaps it away defiantly. Jolly onto the loose ball. Pendlebury feeds it back. Swan, Pendlebury, draws a man, goes to side bottom. Along the boundary, Dawes wants it, gets it. Some real winners in that passage of play. Darren Jolly's ability to work back and help out his defenders. Not the conventional way for Collingwood. has been instrumental since half-time. When Pendlebury won the Anzac medal. He must be a chance for the Norm Smith today. Swan gets it short from Johnson. Pendlebury's response from last week, having only having the five kicks, and he looked hurt, he looked lame, yeah. so you'd assume he's probably still a little bit under the weather. But his game today has been outstanding. So reach short to Swan. Schneider gets a little bit of it. Schwan back, though. 
uses Johnson, a natural left footer, so it's on the right side for him. That floating kick of his to Shaw. Shaw quickly on. Didak in a dangerous spot. One on one. Well done at the back, Dempster. Wellingham, little give. Didak still weaving a bit out wide. Not good, Dawson. Montagna quite oh. today. And Collingwood with all the numbers. And he is very much like his surname, isn't he, Heath? He's oh, a kind of prover. <laughs> so ball forward. Towards the pocket. Interesting. Two Saints fell over. Doors hand passes to the goal square. Thomas turns around and pops it through on the bounce. Was flattened oh, anyway. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Goal this down. I won't get two. That'll be greedy. Oh, look at that. Joyous scenes. <laughs> Come on, Pies. <laughs> Oh, almost in tears already. I think he is in tears. What a remarkable scene. I'll tell you what, premierships are great. They're great for the players, no doubt about that, but they're absolutely outstanding for supporters. I know with an army like Collingwood, they're just going to be absolutely <laughs> over the moon. These players will be thanked for the rest of their lives, I reckon, Lee. And he's trying to think, how the hell can we lose from here? But we might. So I can't, <laughs> I can't let myself go yet. I... <laughs> You always think grand finals were about tears, tears of joy or tears of despair. At the moment, the Collingwood people are a bit of tears of joy, I think. But he grew up watching it too, Lane. Yeah, he did. It? So when Eddie starts to cry, it's official, isn't it? I think it's official. <laughs> You've either won or you lost. And today they are tears of joy. They've been magnificent, Collingwood. Brown fending off another great success story. Schneider had a couple of moments, one on half time, one early in the third. Back to Hayes. And then Hayes to Goddard. It was brilliant early. Del Sando could kick this. He's 55 metres out. It's a vacant goal square. Does he get the bounce? He does. It's a goal. You have a look at Mick Moldhouse, yes. I don't think Mick in the coach's box is relaxing just yet. Can't Still see a tear. Minutes. No <laughs> tears. Any tears either. <laughs> what does Ross Lyon do, Lee? Oh, there's not a whole lot you, you can do. I mean, I think he, he had a bit of a shortage of resources. I reckon he's been one or two forwards mm. short against the Collingwood uh, defence but have won the ball around the middle better than St Kilda and they haven't been able to tackle well. Collingwood are too quick. I'm fair to say Ross Lyon went to the rabbit pretty early today, plucked him out of the hat, Gilbert went forward. Had he kicked those goals? Mm. Not sure whether he should have started him there, Dennis. Yeah, The game point. was already slipping away by that point. Kozetsky just went straight at Brown, over the top Goddard, terrific hand pass, Del Santo goes for the outside of the bird. O'Brien being held by one arm, takes the mark. Chips it to Thomas. Hasn't Both Thomas elevated his name Yeah, the last two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> O'Brien's had a very good final series as well. Thomas just outstanding. Pendlebury along the line, and Didak is starting to strut. <laughs> and when Didak struts, that is bad news for everybody except Collingwood. Swan. Isn't, isn't that everybody? <laughs> <laughs> so Swan on the outer side. A long way to go, just under 15 minutes. But it seems this one is in the book. Didak again. Didak along the line. Only one thing can happen. Out of bounds and or well that's two. I was going to say or a mark for Collingwood. It's the official. yellow jacket's on. It is official. Yeah. Tears for Eddie. The gold jacket for Joffy. <laughs> Put down the glasses I reckon. But you notice Eddie pulled rank. He went first. <laughs> <laughs> and Goddard searches. Collingwood's last premiership league of course you remember it well. The score was 13-11 to 5-11. At the moment mm. it's 13-8 to 5-9 and that was Collingwood's greatest winning margin in any grand final so they might be able to upstage that today I'll tell you what is interesting I think whenever there's a premiership team they always talk about dynasties and era basically when they win their first one you look at this Collingwood side so many young players they look like the future's pretty bright for them a lot of people are leaving Melbourne if you say that <laughs> Thomas kicks out wide and a boundary throw in so Ray Shaw the Shaw family Bruce Shaw alongside. Yeah. And uh, Ray, in all those grand finals, the drawn one. Reese, who played in a losing grand final against the Lions. And the, the Heath going to join Uncle Tony as a winner in the black and white.
in a grand final. Swan forward, Blake building it towards the line and over the line. Just got nothing out of the, well, let me say the bottom six for the Saints today. Nothing, have they? Yeah, it's looked pretty sparse there. If we just even go from a statistical point of view, Dempster seven touches, McWalter seven, Baker four, looked a bit shaky after a week, Eddie and Milne. Yep, yeah, doesn't read well. Wellingham liked his game too. Oh, gee. Not a bad effort. Right against the boundary line. Got some deft touches today. Just gone in there and worked the ball clear of the packs. No possessions really on occasions, but able to do that to good effect. That's where Collingwood wanted the game played in the open. O'Brien flies from behind. Here's danger. Side bottom. They stay off him. Comes back to Maxwell. Maxwell will go back again to Brown. Now there's a man onto the far side. Swan hasn't spotted him yet. Still there. Well, he's just ignored. He's ignored Swan. He'll get it eventually. Eventually. Wow. Made him wait. And then the kick wasn't too flash. Swan against the boundary line. That's better. Thomas coming up for his 23rd possession. Don't be surprised if he wins a medal this afternoon. Not just one, maybe two. Gee, sprinted for 50 metres there, mm. Thomas. His work rate, said it earlier in the call, he is almost typified Collingwood's year. He's taken his game to another level just as Collingwood have done. He was two in the same draft that Pendlebury was five. Oh, good draft. Mm. Not a good <laughs> kick. The Collingwood crowd's now cheering as a 50 metre penalty. It'll take it to it in Harry uh, O'Brien's range as well. But the Collingwood crowd's just cheering every mark now. He has had a good final series, Harry. All Australian this year, but he had a, a modest grand final last week, but he's, yeah, no, he's no, rectified Mill, that today. Mill did a good job on him last week, but uh, yes, he's reversed that particular duel today. He's kept Mill completely out of it. Started today really well and had that real energy. Went for a run, took an intercept ball across half forward for the Pies. He's had a great day. He can kick a long running goal, we know that. He's 50 out. It's a beautiful kick. He's jumped out of the thinking chair right now. He feels like Einstein. <laughs> it's a sweet feeling, this. No, it's not. Not for him. Yeah, that's the other side of the coin. Well, last week, we said at the end of the game, there was this bit of nothing feeling because no one had won, no one had lost. Mm. Today, there's going to be the extreme. Collingwood have got it. And St Kilda are just going to have to uh, quit their teeth and bear the fact that they've... Uh, lost the second consecutive year. <laughs> Great picture. Wonderful kick. 14th goal of his career, first of the afternoon. Nick pulling his career high. He's got there in ones. He kicked one last week as well. Here he is again. At the back end now, Harry O'Brien. Crumbs the football, goes to ball. Everyone just getting a roar. Ball around the outer side. High one in front, Gilbert. Good mark. Under pressure. Short to Del Santo. Has seen a lot of the football, but hasn't done much with it. Goddard went to ground. Jones kicks inside the forward 50, and Milne bobs up. Milne likes this situation to run around and pull it back across his body and invariably it ends like that. Well done. Well, it becomes a bit of the mercy rule now, doesn't it? It's just a matter of playing out the last ten minutes to a degree. The, uh, nothing much to uh, be gained by either side. Collingwood have got all the momentum. St Kilda kick a goal. No enthusiasm, no life because really it's just... A very small consolation prize. Well, we know who's going to get their hands all around that in the next 15 minutes. Secured without consecutive goals all day. They haven't been able to get any flow on. They crawl their way up to six. Milner, a goal with just his second kick for the afternoon. Didac running hard and then delivering. Brown got down low, stays down, little give. Back to Blair, cloak, back to Didac. 
And then Didak hugging the line. They do it so well. Jolly a rare fumble. Back to Didak. Didak just thinking about it. And then hooking back to a one-on-one -on -one where the odds were against the little guy. And Blake pulls rank on Blair. Tough for both teams about now. Nothing tough about it for Collingwood, Dennis. Well, they want the siren. They want to celebrate. Take it on the outer side, Shaw. Who am I to tell you, Tom? Here's Shaw, 55 metres out short. One Wellingham. Wellingham is through. Runs into an open goal and kicks it. Nothing tough about that. There's the, uh, I think it's at Amy Stadium, Amy. which is just nearby to the MCG where all the overflow crowd is. But, uh, you know, what can you say now except uh, it is celebration time. Well, what we're seeing now is the best of the best team this season. Yeah, oh, yeah. Actually, we, we spoke about Collingwood's inaccuracy. There's been four rush behind for Collingwood, so they've kicked 15 goals, five from off the boot. So their accuracy today has been exceptionally good. I feel really awful and cynical, you say, it's because Travis hasn't had many shots. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Here's Shaw kicking the ball in high and hard to full forward. Blake probably should have got a free Gilbert in that back half. Kaczynski's little give awful. Ball tried to rob it of him. You mentioned this is the best of Collingwood. Also, Bruce, I think it's fair to say they've built their game on just respect, respecting the situation. Ten minutes to go, ten and a half minutes to go. They'll play it out. They'll play the whole game out. They'll be laying those 50 tackles, those spoils, shepherds, all the hard stuff they're renowned for. They'll play this game right out to the last minute. Gilbert back to Dempster under pressure. Quick kick from Baker. All the numbers, Collingwood and Maxwell. Well, that's not the most famous last quarter mark he's taken, but it was a good one. Started the game exceptionally well again, had those structures. St Kilda put some time in him, I think it was Eddie to start with, then Mick Walter, Gilbert played on him. <laughs> it's equal parts fatigue and adrenaline, but with the adrenaline... Well, he hasn't yeah, kicked... And a... the excitement, not out of the question, he can lob a 55-metre shot. Well, he hasn't kicked a goal this year, Lee. He's kicked two he's, behinds for the he's, season. He's, he's, having a, he's limbering he's up. He's having a crack at it. Well, this is for bragging rights at about midnight tonight, yep. isn't it? <laughs> on the Collingwood logo. Well, he's got the distance, but uh, neither Nick has kicked a goal. And we talked about Kerry and Brown, Jonathan Brown, last uh, week. It's very hard, I'm thinking about mm. Revolt today, for a big four to actually really kick a bag, well, isn't it? Nathan Brown's done a magnificent job. He's always been there and done really well in the contest. Running Reed. Goddard, push out. Got hands to it, but Goddard was pushed under the ball by Brown. Has he won the contest, Lee, Nathan Brown? I think he has because he's won the contest in the 50-metre uh, arc and they're the critical ones against Rewalt. Yep. Man who got the opening goal. The only change to their side, goal sack, and what a good change it was. Back in for Leon Davis, who still gets a medal. Beams around the outer side. Goes down towards the attacking 50, side bottom. Stolen out of his hands by Blair, the little fellow. Just misses. Must be sick of the little fella. I'll stop. <laughs> dare, say, dare say he's had it all his life, hey, didn't he? Kicked it behind. The big fella just missed to the right. <laughs> I know all about that one. Here's Hayes. Gwilt. I think his reputation's been yeah. enhanced, Gwilt. Yeah. Baker. Well, it worked last week with Baker, but he struggled today. Oh, good Mark Beans. Yes, that talk of the second up game where you're actually you're still recovering from the first week. That's... And the look today, hasn't it, with Baker? So Didak back to Shaw, and then back to Maxwell. And you talked about a dynasty for maybe oh. Collingwood, and you think of the Saints, this will be their third grand final in two seasons without a win. And the official attendance today, 93,853. Now, in 1977, they got 108 and 98. Yep. 100 today in 93, so something similar. So, O'Brien... Johnson, it's Shaw, goes for a gallop. Turvey, Revolt comes at him. Turvey kicks down towards half forward. Baker judged it best. Dawson, now Peak. He's at right half back, the former Docker. 
Kicks beyond the wing, and the mark is taken by Eddie. Four players involved there we haven't seen a lot of this afternoon. Down towards the pocket, coming up the ground, Schneider takes a tumble, and the ball ricochets out of bounds. So boundary throw in, right on the 50. Lee Brown comes across, and will do the rucking. He's been the perfect foil after a sluggish start, gave away some early free kicks, but, gee, he's worked his way into the contest. Sure. Kick from Swan to the wing. Oh, terrific by Cloak. It's a wonderful contester, Mark. He's mm. taken the most in terms of average throughout the year. He kicks the ball inside 50. Side bottom held on to. Jolly got up high. Back to Dempster. So Dempster and Schneider, five grand finals each. Just that one win. Their first. Goddard, Dal Santo, Milne, Montagna. Big names. Back to peak. And then Peak decides to go with a long ball, and Reed gets back. That was re-rolled versus three Collingwood mm. opponents. That was why Secura just had nowhere to go deep forward. Well, Reed can hardly walk, but I don't reckon he wants to come off, that's for sure. Johnson wide to Beams. To Maxwell running on. Thomas. <laughs> you called it, Tom. His work rate, right, Bruce. It's unbelievable. He started on the opposite forward flank and just ran past. I think it might be Dempster is it on the mark. Just a huge Herculean effort. Yep. And he's gone to the next level, hasn't yep. he? No doubt. Well, nothing's beyond them today. It's the post. Just spent a bit of time to talk about St Kilda. They've been up for a long time now. Played in the last two grand finals. It's going to be really interesting and challenging to uh, bounce back from this one, Lee. Built to the other side. Lee's thinking about that. It's out of bounds. So we'll have a throw in. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they do need to actually find a little bit more of their bottom few, don't they? I mean, they've, they've got uh, probably six of the best 12 players, when you know, ten, even 10 players before the game started today, not necessarily on today's performance, but they've had a few, half a dozen that don't give them a lot quite often. Thomas de Swan settles, goes to Jolly. Jolly down towards right half forward. Clock continues to run. Inside six minutes now. Jolly goes for distance. Try and mark that. Well, he does. Well played there by Dempster. Ghosting across in front of the pack. Hand passes into the path of Blake. Graham. Little chip to Revolt. Thought that might happen. Revolt's on the wing. Looks back towards the corridor. Ray. Gilbert. Well, that's a beautiful pass. Just got it there in time. Tuvi was coming across. McWalter will take this kick directly in front. I think they've, they've made the most of that opportunity, St Kilda, but Rewald marking the ball up on the wing, that's great. Rewald worked so hard, but they've just... He's, he, they, if he's a transition play, they've got no-one to go to when they get within, uh, within scoring distance. Good look at it. Kick has got the carry. Not quite. Taken by Maxwell. Cheekily runs away. Well, when you're the captain of the Premiership team, you can do that. He kicks it up towards the wing. Gilbert came at the football, so too Dempster, his teammate, feeds it forward. Del Santo inside the 50. And there he is again, the skipper. <laughs> How sweet this is. They gave him the number five. And my word, he's never let it down. Not for one game. If it wasn't a famous number going into the uh, season, it will be now, no doubt about that. So the, the Premier and the President, eh? Who pulls rank on who? A President or a Premier? Today it's the President. <laughs> well, Eddie probably holds the most influential position in Victoria, doesn't he? The kick out wide taken by Brown. Yeah, Mac, we've seen the best of Maxwell in the last five minutes, haven't we? All the good things that yeah. he does. His leadership and his ability to just say the right thing, have the right attitude. I've always been so impressed, Tom, with the way you led Geelong in the Premiership era, but the way Nick does it, it's a very similar role he seems to play. It's actually a really good position on the ground to lead from. You've yeah, got the game behind. in front of you, yeah, yeah. particularly if you can orchestrate where you can 
free yourself up as well. Can really drive the team message. And Nick Maxwell, hats off to him. He's done a fantastic job with this footy club. And for Nick Revolt, well, there were tears maybe last year, but he's going to feel gutted today. He'll feel like he just didn't do enough himself. It was a hard day for a, a big forward for the Saints. Big fly Good. coming at the back from Goddard. St Kilda go forward. And at Mune, well, he's had so little of the ball today. Has he kicked a second goal in the last quarter? He has. But the two today don't measure up to the two last week. Yes, you look you look around the field and the, I mean the uh, the Collingwood have had this game won for quite a while now, but the sort of energy that they've got to to keep running, I have just been really impressed. Start talking about individuals. I mean we know Pendlebury, Shaw, Thomas, Swan, but young side bottom. Mm. Best game I think I've seen him play to play that in a grand final in what his second year. Is a magnificent effort by that young fella. Exactly double. 102 to 51. Under three and a half minutes, Michael Malthouse comes down to the boundary. His third premiership. In vintage form. That in itself is an amazing story. We touched on it at three-quarter time. Ray dragged down. Thomas has got the football inside the centre square. Fires a pass. Almost an involuntary mark there to Wellingham. Turns around, goes long. Side bottom. Anything the Saints can muster at one end. Collingwood doing better at the other. This is really interesting down on the Collingwood bench. He got the feel that Mick Malthouse wanted uh, Scott Pendlebury out on the field. Thomas came off. He sent Thomas back out. He said, you can stay out there. He's trying to orchestrate, I guess, the younger players to be sitting on the pine. Who's on, who's off? Side bottom runs around, and that is the cream. They're home, well and truly, but they may not be home later tonight. I'm suggesting the early hours of tomorrow morning. <laughs> I thought Mick could have been a bit more expressive when he went down. What do you think? He could have celebrated for the crowd or something. What did you give the, uh, the yeah. double-fisted pump to the... He actually came in through the race, so he didn't do the walk down. I think he's actually bubbling inside, but he oh, actually... It's, it's no... funny, when you, when you know you were happy and you want to smile, your face can't crack for about mm. ten minutes because you've been so tense. Although we see Bucks, third Nathan Buckley, first year back as an assistant coach. Premiership resulted. Well, he's the only teenager out there. Still side bottom. Kicks his second. Collingwood are going to win by close to 10 goals. Graham and Wellingham. Wellingham so slippery trying to get out of it. And Michael Malthouse in winning today. Well, he joins you, Lee. It's tears of joy here. Everybody <laughs> sort of as a, a living Collingwood coach, but he joins you and Ron Barassi as having won a premiership as a player, a coach at three different yep, clubs. Yep. It's only Barassi, Matthews and Malthouse. I'd like to be in that club. How big that is. Hey, and, of course, he's the nothing. oldest coach. Oldest coach ever now to Thank win you. a VFL, well, what, AFL what, grand final. What Mick's doing down there? He's still... Putting That's a David Butterfin, who's his conditioning coach. I'm not sure what that... He, surely he's not orchestrating a, a loose man in defence. A recovery <laughs> session. Hayes going nowhere, taken front on by Jolly. He might be planning for next year. He's still he coaching, as we know, in front yep. of with Buck sitting on his shoulder. Well, the draw was marginally better then last week than the result today. Hayes, at least they got a chance to fight on after last week. All in vain today, Pete. Revolt, tackled by Tuvi, wrestled down, Peak feeds it forward, Schneider slips away, runs down towards half forward, comes back to Graham, Graham unloads but drifting back, Maxwell takes the mark, ball is on the move, that's ignored, goes to the other side, he sure has got it. They have played the game out to the very second, Nick Maxwell setting up the structures, now they'll just milk the clock. Get it to the crowd favourites, give them a cheer. <laughs> That's all of them. Here we go. Yeah, this is true. Ball to O'Brien. O'Brien still inside the defensive 50. Said earlier today that eight of their premierships had been won after finishing on top. They finished on top this season. 
Strong mark is taken by McAvoy. Plays on to Gwilt. Gwilt looks inside the forward 50. Unloads with a long kick. Plenty of magpies down there. Off hands. Taken in defence by Shaw. Smothered off the boot. Revolt hand passes to Jones. Across it comes to McWalter. Hand passes to Hayes. And he misses. Gee, he kicked a point at the same end late last week, didn't he? But slightly different repercussions. Dennis Josh Cage is telling me eight of those premierships too coming in October for Collingwood. Eight of their 15. It's amazing when you look oh. around the ground, the uh, <laughs> so, so much of the ground's thinned out. I'm guaranteeing they're all St Kilda supporters. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. And all the black and white supporters are still here. Before the game, the atmosphere was electric. It oh, was yeah. the people's grand final. The fans got into the game. And the Collingwood fans in particular have absolutely lapped this up. So ball out wide. I said it last week, but you feel like a big club is just getting bigger by the moment, oh, yeah, don't yeah. you? It'll be their 15th premiership, one shy of Carlton and Essendon. They're all legends now, have a listen to that. What a peculiar position and a beautiful position Luke Ball has found himself in, having played for the Saints last year against Geelong. So Collingwood win by their greatest ever margin in a grand final. It doesn't get better than that. We just get you around the right way here. That's a hard way to do it, eight quarters of footy. Oh. Well, we said it was half time. We had a good last half. All were just terrific. Absolutely true. All year and years before that. So They're a special group of young men, aren't they? Oh, well, they win a premiership. I, I, I take out the Saints, you know, they're no less special, but we, it was our day and we won. So it's fantastic. Nick, you haven't been in this situation since 1994. That's a long time ago. Does this one feel like it did back there in 1994? Oh, wrong time to be answering that, really. Uh, wrong time to be asking, wrong time to be answering it. It's just been... Well... I, I, I just... You know, West Coast, West Coast, but I, I just don't have to... I, I just think there's so many things here for the great Collingwood Army that have put up with a hell of a lot, and I just think it's fantastic for them, fantastic for the players. Everyone that worked at the football club, and oh well, a great relief. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Josh Fraser there, 200 games Nick. for the club. Down to you, Richard. Yeah, Nick, how does this feel, mate? You are the premiership captain. Hey, good, uh, grand final replays. <laughs> <laughs> you like them now? Mate, uh, St Kilda surrounded us last week, and uh, there's a lot of things we did well, but a lot of things we did poorly, and it all just quit today, mate. And, uh, it's been unbelievable where these boys have come from. Guys like Jared Blair, who wasn't even in our top 40 players before uh, that round 10 when he got his go. So there's all so many individual stories and also heartbreaking for Presti and, and Oves and Fraze and Madge who have driven this club for so many years. And Tark and Lockyer, those guys are the ones who have been an inspiration. They're the ones who taught us how to play footy and the heart goes out to those guys but they're still a part of it. As you said, mate, it's a real team effort. That's what it's been all year for Collingwood. It's been total team. Everyone just played their role. You yeah. did it again today. And our whole, our whole week, the whole team is know your role, play your role. I think a few guys got caught up and trying to do too much last week, but this week, this week they did it, mate. Get over it all, mate. 
Tim. I think you've got Luke Ball, Tim. Well, Luke, congratulations. I know you agonised over the move to Collingwood last year. But it's going to be the right move, hasn't it? I mean, you must be feeling just absolutely elated now, or is there just a pang of bitterness about the fact that you're looking over there? I noticed it before, looking over there, the Saints players, you know how they feel. I do. Yeah. Oh, look, it's a weird feeling, Tim, to be honest. I'm absolutely, I'm just so happy for, for the, the Collingwood Footy Club and the supporters and, and Mick, and they gave me a chance. But yeah, on the same side, I don't know how they're feeling. And, I've got some great mates over there and I, I really feel for them. So I'm so I'm so so happy for this group. It's, it's such a long year and it's been even longer this year after what happened last week. They deserve it. They work so hard, but yeah, there's, there's, there's part of me that does feel for them. Yeah. Mate, go and enjoy it. Well done. What a gentleman he is, Luke Ball. He was in that same draft as Hodge and Judd, was it? It was Hodge. Judd, and they've all, all got a premiership. They've all got a premiership. Collingwood by 56 points. It's a famous final when Collingwood win it. We'll be back with a presentation after this. Collingwood win by 56 points. Let's go down to the hallowed turf for the presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin our presentation, the AFL would like to acknowledge our premier partner, Toyota. With David Butner joining us on the ground to David on the Toyota team, thank you for the support you give the great game of Australian football. It's been a very tough day here at the office for the St Kilda Football Club. Please welcome their skipper, Nick Revolt, to say a few words. Congratulations to Collingwood. Clearly the better team on the day. Well done, guys. For the, our boys and our supporters and Kilda Football Club. Didn't stop fighting today, all year, and we won't stop fighting either. Keep your heads up. Thank you, Nick. Ladies and gentlemen, please now make welcome former North Melbourne Premiership player and best of field in the 1977 grand final replay, Arnold Brightus, to present the Norm Smith medal to the player adjudged best of field today in Mark II of the 2010 Grand Final. And the winner of the North Smith Medal of 2010 is Scott Emberby from Collingwood. Firstly, to St Kilda, you guys are a hell of a side, so well done. Um, our boys, uh, this is the best feeling I've ever had. Um, let's hope there's a few more to come. Thank you. Congratulations, Scott. Arnold, thank you. Well, it's every young footballer's dream to be on this ground on the grand final day. And it's with much pleasure that we are now going to invite 22 participants from the NAB AFL Auskick program and they'll present the Premiership medallions to the players of the Collingwood Football Club. Number four, Alan Didak. Number six, Tyson Goldsack. Number eight, Harry O'Brien. Number ten, Scott Pendlebury. Number 12, Luke Ball. (laughs) 
number 13, Dale Thomas. Number 15, Lee Brown. Number 16, Nathan Brown. Number 17, Dane Beams. Number 18, Darren Jolly. Number 20, Ben Reed. Number 21, Sherrod Wellingham. Number 22, Steel Sidebottom. Number 26, Ben Johnson. Number 30, Brett McCaffer. Number 31, Chris Dawes. Number 32, Travis Cloak. Number 34, Alan Toby. Number 36, Dane Swan. Number 39, Heath Shaw. Number 47, Jared Blair. Number five, the captain, Nick Maxwell. <laughs> Would you now please join with me in welcoming Australian Football Hall of Fame member and Premiership coach David Parkin to present the Jock McHale medal to the coach of the 2010 Toyota AFL Premiership team, the Collingwood Football Club, Mr. Mick Malthouse. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd be uh, remiss not to, first of all, one of the things that someone said to me straight after the game, oh, how fantastic your side has been. Well, 
I've always believed that um, you've got to be very, very humble winners and gracious in defeat. The Saints have been outstanding in the last few years, and I've got to applaud them for their, the way they play and the way they go about it. <laughs> the AFL put on another magnificent opportunity for both sides to come together and play before, I don't know how many people here, but I say to say 90 plus thousand. Uh, they should be commended for the way that the, the competition has been run and the simple fact that we are probably the, one of the most watched competitions in the, in the world per head of population is, is an outstanding achievement by the AFL. <laughs> to our, I'm not going to go through all the sponsors, but our sponsors or our partners have been outstanding. The board have been terrific in their backup. To the supporters, I just feel so tremendous for you blokes who have stuck with us through good times and bad. You've always supported us the way you've come out, training. As I said, from sometimes when we haven't played so well, you've been there, you've stuck with us, and it's your trophy. <laughs> to the playing group. I can say this now because I've only got one, I think one more year left, Ed. Um, they are my boys and I love them dearly. They have been outstanding. So, I just um, thank you all so very much for your wonderful support. And once again, we've proven that this great game is, in truly, is truly great. Thank you very much. I just uh, want to reiterate what Mick said about the Saints. They've been one of the dominant teams the last few years, and I'm sure your time will come, so make sure you stick with them. They're led very well, and they're going to be up there again next year. I want to thank uh, our major sponsors, Emirates, Adidas, Aussie, and Westpac. They allow us to uh, go to Arizona for training camp to build the Westpac Centre. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to do what we did today. To the AFL and their major sponsor Toyota, again, uh, thank you for all your support to allow us to do what we love doing every single week. And uh, 22 guys ran out today, but it took everyone on our list to get to this stage, and a lot of guys didn't get to pull on the black and white, but uh, those guys are just as important as the ones who did. Finally, it's been a long 20 years, and you've stuck by us the whole way. This one's for you guys. Thanks to everyone out there. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have much pleasure in inviting 1972 and 1973 common medalist and Australian Football Hall of Fame member Peter McKenna to present the Premiership Cup to Nick Maxwell, Michael Malthouse and the Collingwood Football Club.
What a wonderful team. They've had a magnificent season. What's that last 15 minutes like for a club like this when you've just won a flag, do you reckon? You'd know, Tom, and so would you, Lee. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling. We were speaking just off air before. It's those five minutes when you're on the ground once the game's been won. The whole club comes in. We saw Tarkin, Lockyer, Shane O'Brien, Preston G. Comer, everyone together. Never more true has side by side their club song been today. I think they've absolutely magnificent club, thoroughly deserved the premise. Robert spoke about the moment where you know you've won the premiership is just the most fantastic surge of emotional. It sort of crept up on Collingwood because they had it won and they knew they had it won a long way out. Let's go back to the ground and Tim Watson's with our Norm Smith medalist for today, Scott Pendlebury. Well, Scott, how did it feel to stand up there as a premiership player? At the start of the year, they Mick spoke about, uh, Joel spoke about the feeling that you get, and you know they're not wrong. That's the best feeling ever. You're very confident as a group coming into this final series. Yeah, we were. We knew that uh, what we do works, and um, you know, even last week, a lot of people said, you know, that, that we had our chance, and uh, you know, we sort of blew our chances. We we're so confident today that we'll get those chances. We'll just take full advantage, in which we did. So many of the young players stood up again today. Side bottom, still side bottom, was just outstanding. Yeah, he was. He, uh, he played his role really well, and that's something we emphasised uh, before the game. We just need 22 role players to stand up, and that's what everyone did. And the acquisitions of Jolly and also Ball, so important. Yeah, they were, and they were fantastic today. And uh, you know, they, they gave the group so much experience and uh, made everyone walk taller. And congratulations on your North Smith medal too. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well done, Tim. So much said coming into this game and throughout the season about these two teams and the way they went about their business both seriously committed to their beliefs with their strategy and Tom it was a victory for Collingwood style over St Kilda St Kilda may have to modify theirs do you think oh look I think whenever a premiership team salutes everyone looks at how they do that so uh, I think uh, Collingwood probably identified a part of the game where they can really excel is that forward pressure yeah. Nick Maxwell spoke after the game he said know your role and play your role and no side did that better this year than Collingwood it's interesting too that Michael Malthouse is conscious of how many years he's got to go <laughs> and, and was the only time he mentioned Ed in the, in the speech but just on Mickey, it's been 380 games since he's last coached a winning premiership. Yeah, he amazing. coached um, back in 1994. He's been in 380 games since then today. So it's been a long stretch, hasn't it, between drinks for him, so to speak. Well, remember, he got the Bulldogs into a preliminary final, then he got the Eagles into premierships, and Collingwood have obviously finally to, a, to their third grand final in the premiership. So to take three clubs to the top four, that just uh, underlines what a very good coach he is. Let's go back to Tim with Harry O'Brien. Well, Harry, is this one of the best walks you've ever had in your life? Oh, it's certainly the best. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, there's just so many people that have uh, been along the journey and helped us out so much. You know, we're just so grateful to all the Magpie, Magpie Army that couldn't make it and the ones that are here today. Just absolutely magnificent. I'm just, yeah, I'm speechless. I just don't know what to say. I'm just thrilled. Your journey has been an unbelievable journey. Did you think that it would ever end up here one day? Yes, I did. I've, I've, I've had faith my, from, from the day I walked into the club. I knew Mick Moldhouse was the best coach going around. I knew the, uh, you know, this, this isn't just one year. This, is, this has been, you know, several years in the making, and it's just unbelievable that we've just kept the faith and we've continued to improve each year and just to produce this magnificent performance. Harry, you deserve it. Well done. All right, cheers. Such a team effort, 11 goal scorers again today, Collingwood. Yeah. It's been one of their strengths, just that depth and ability for so many people to contribute. Well, actually, uh, they had, remember we had 62 inside 50s last week for nine goals. Well, they didn't get in as many today, 55, which is a good number, but 16 goals, that's a great efficiency going forward. Let's go back down to the ground, and this time it's Matthew Richardson. What's that? Daddy of Richo. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah, as you say, it's unbelievable. This is why you play footy in... Uh... Yeah, mate, just soaking it all up. Now, so many of you guys are the same age. You've still got a lot of years in front of you. Do you feel like this is going to be the start of a real dynasty for you guys? Oh, let's hope so, mate. Uh, you know, I suppose when you, you get to footy close, you want to be part of successful teams, and the club's done so well in getting us in a position to do that. And, you know, we'll enjoy this, but there's still a lot of hard work ahead of the years to come. Well, that's the important thing, mate. The night ahead and the next few days, it's going to be a bit of fun next few days. I think you let yourself down a bit there, mate. Next month, we'll enjoy it. <laughs>
I reckon if you took the two matches, Thomas had been got out in a photo finish over the two matches as the best two players over the yeah. four hours. Just really improved his game. He's had the 27th possession. He was the leading contested possession player on the field. Has elevated himself to another level. That cup's in dangerous hands right now. Dida can swan, isn't it? <laughs> I've actually been surprised at the speed of this lap. I thought it would have taken about an hour. Yeah, they've uh, walked pretty, pretty briskly. Talk about characters in footy. Well, Collingwood have got plenty of characters in this team, haven't Can they? Can I tell you one thing that happens after every grand final is won? Talk of that team Don't creating know. a dynasty. In and fact, occasionally that happens. And I remember, mostly it doesn't. I remember uh, Brian Cook, the CEO of Geelong, saying that Let's just enjoy this one. Forget yeah. about the future. Just enjoy the, the here and now. Tim, back to you with Dane Swan. Well, with Dane Swan, Dane, you had hold of the cup before. You didn't want to give it up either. Man, it's just an awesome feeling, mate. It probably hasn't really sunk in yet, mate, but, you know, to do with the guys that I love so much, and they're all my best mates, mate. I'm sure we'll have a great time celebrating over the next few days, mate. Amazing self-belief in this group, Dane. Absolutely, mate. We knew, you know, we knew we didn't play to our best last week. We got away with the draw, so we knew we had to come out and do what we do and, you know, show today. I've got a feeling you're going to enjoy this too. Oh, mate, we're going to have a fair crack. Absolutely. <laughs> You'll be able to get that tattoo finished too, finally. I, mean, I don't think I'll be, I don't think I'll be uh, sober enough to get a tattoo for the next couple of days anyway, mate. <laughs> well done, Dave. Thanks for just mate. So, Captain, with all due respect to Chris Judd and Gary Ablett, it's been the year of the Swan in one way, hasn't it? He's been the player of the year in so many ways. Alan Didak with Richo. Dead, uh, amazing, mate. You've been in the club for a while now. Is this better than you thought? There's Swanee going by there. Yeah, been here for uh, 10 years and played, in, played in two losing ones and tell you what, this is an amazing feeling, absolutely amazing feeling. It's better than what you thought. You must have dreamt of this day like all footballers. Tell me, can you? I want to know. Oh, you do. You do. You dream of these days, but, you know, that doesn't go out with any hard work. We, we've been training for this, not, not for this year, for a long, long time. And uh, the players have just stuck together. Especially after last week, you know, we were probably even lucky to draw it in the end, but credit to the boys, we just played unbelievable today. So many fans here today, looking around now, all the Saints fans are gone, not one Collingwood supporters left. Well, that's why we drew last week, because we knew it was going to be more of a Collingwood atmosphere, get rid of all the corporates and uh, bring the Collingwood army, and that's what we wanted. Enjoy the beers tonight, mate. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> Just saw Lee Brown now, Alan Tiffy, but Lee Brown with a couple of men. Winning a premiership makes such a difference to his legacy, doesn't it? You say Lee Brown, premiership player. Down to you, Tim, with Heath Shaw. Well, the old man couldn't do it, but you've done it. Yeah, it took a while, man. It took a while. Um, I just, I don't know what to say, really. It's, mate, it's, it's just amazing. We've got amazing fans, everyone in the club. Everyone contributes every week, and you know what? We, there's 22 guys out there, but... Everyone, it's for everyone. This premiership, mate, is amazing. Well, your family has been linked to the Collingwood Football Club for a long time. What will it mean to the family? Oh, mate, it's, I suppose it's massive. Dad always talks about don't, don't take anything for granted. Um, and, mate, to, to, win a, to win a premiership at my age, and Dad didn't win one at all, it's, it's just it's massive, and um, I'm pretty wrapped. Well done. Congratulations. Thanks, mate. Well, it was a quick photograph to start, and it's a pretty quick lap to finish. <laughs> Could be well record pace, Tom. Compare that to yours. Yeah. Would you have a tie? No, we were, we were looking at this, but I think it almost typifies this Collingwood. They want to get down into the rooms and share it amongst themselves. They are uh, taking all before them, and, and Al mentioned earlier, it couldn't, be, uh, it couldn't be more worthy winners for the 2010 do it, championship. Do everything at a fast tempo, the Collingwood. <laughs> they, they certainly do. They played at a very fast tempo this afternoon. Too fast, as far as St Kilda were concerned. And now the celebration is all theirs. And most of the crowd had stuck around. It was ironic, too, that Peter McKenna presented the trophy, a band called McKenna. Played last one standing, and Collingwood is certainly that. Just savouring the last moments on the ground, and now they're headed down to the rooms, and we're going to follow them in. Collingwood are premiers. They won by 56 points. It was, dare we say it, in a cakewalk. As it turns out, I'm sure now he doesn't think the rules are a joke. <laughs> <laughs> what a game Tom has played. And I suppose now he has lifted the bar on himself, Tom. Yeah, without a doubt. I think we've spoken a couple of times. His game typified his season and that of Collingwood. This, this moment here when you go down the race, the people in the background are generally the family of the players. You come into the room, you sing the song. 
All the loved ones are there. It's absolutely an amazing feeling. They're going to love this. And the scary part for the rest of the competition, I know it's bad luck to talk about what's to come in future years, but so many fresh young faces as they come in to celebrate. Just get the feeling this could be just a beginning. And they all played so well, Dennis. Yep. All the young players, you know, you're looking at the names. Side bottom was great. Wellingham was great. Tuvi was great. McCaffrey was great. Great foundations for a great club. A few greats in there, Tom. Nathan Brown played a fair game too. Didn't he? He blunted the champion. Yeah, he did. He did it last week too. Revolt got a couple last week. Today found it even tougher. It was amazing that about three quarters of the way through the season when Colin was starting to get towards the top of the ladder, they had, I think, six or seven players that actually came off the rookie list. Mm. I mean, they're players mm. that weren't good enough to be drafted, supposedly, but have fought their way through off the rookie list. So they certainly haven't done this with really high draft choices. We know the penalty was high, Thomas was high, Didac was high, but a lot of players there that have just become really good players from fairly humble teenage beginnings. Mm. Very classy, too, by the bagpies. You saw Eddie Maguire there. Players who didn't make the team are certainly being honoured down there as well. Premiership back in 1990. Lee Matthews, I think, lived in the glow for a while. The last Premiership coach, Michael Malthouse, joins him now. And Michael Malthouse, what an incredible record. Over a long period of time, this afternoon, was coaching in his 47th final, his seventh grand final, and he wins his third Premiership. Premiership's back in 92 and 94 with the West Coast Eagles. And today, his name is etched alongside this wonderful Collingwood team. Premiers again in 2010. They win by 56 points and generally they controlled the game. They led by 18 points at quarter time, by 27 at half time, by 41 at three quarter time, and one running away. Scott Pendlebury wins the Norm Smith medal with 29 possessions today. And as I said before, so many young faces and the future looks so bright for Collingwood. Collingwood have taken all before them. They win at the MCG. Stand by. We'll talk more about the game right after this.
a lasting image, isn't it? The captain with the cup held aloft and the adoring fans behind him. A record-winning margin for Collingwood in a grand final. 108 played 52 and then 11 goal scorers for Collingwood. Pendlebury with the Norm Smith. The famous Shaw name right behind him. And Thomas, who is a famous name, that's for sure. Over St Kilda. And with uh, well, the memorabilia here with the, the ball signed by some of the greats at Collingwood. Go to it. That's the way you can get it. Call 1800 208 664. I think that'll be much sought after. I'm with Lee Matthews and Tom Harley and Brad Johnson. We've just experienced the Collingwood <laughs> euphoria on our way to this position. And if I look out there, I can see black and white everywhere. I think you forgot to introduce a few here to our Bruce. We're right in amongst and Lee's right at home with his Collingwood faithful. <laughs> best team normally wins the grand final. We've seen that today, haven't we? The best team all season. Yeah, I think so. And I think we saw the best of the best team today as well. Their forward pressure in particular was absolutely outstanding and you couldn't argue with Collingwood Premier's 2010. They just brought that even contribution that they had all year. They had plenty of goal kickers again today and they were just outstanding. It's kicking the footy come back into vogue. There was 250 kicks to 129 handballs and Geelong made the uh, high handball game work. But I'm, good to, I'm pleased to see that kicking the ball, not hand passing too much, is back in vogue because that's why I like footy, personally. Well, Leo said earlier, once a team wins a premiership, you try and copycat, that's don't right. you? And maybe that'll be a trend for the years to come. Neil Kearney earlier today, we saw him following the cheer squad for Collingwood last weekend in the draw. Well, Neil was back amongst the action. Let's catch the atmosphere of today. This is the best day of my life since 1990. And it's deserved. This club bloody deserves this premiership. It deserves it. And are you going to retire that thing now? It's retired. This is the last. This, uh, well, you've gone early. There's 15 minutes to oh, go in a grand fight. The game's over. We've won. We've won the premiership. Oh. We've won the premiership. Go to pies. Go to pies. Are the streets of Melbourne safe tonight, Joffa? <laughs> oh, I, I can't talk. I can't, I'd love to talk to you, but I can't. I'm, it's a great club. Well known to everyone at the club. It's just this is one of the most incredible moments. Don't wake me up if I'm dreaming. Don't wake me up if I'm dreaming. <laughs> it's real. This is 1990, Lee, by the way. We've turned the clock back 20 years. These are the fans in 1990 on the Saturday night when you coached them to the Premiership. It was just amazing. Of course, back then, Victoria Park was Collingwood's home ground, and Victoria Park had about 30,000 people in it. No game. It was just like a rock concert. Amazing. Well, Darren Jolly, a dual Premiership player. I mean, what a, well, the Midas touch. He goes to Sydney and wins one in his first year. He came to Collingwood and played such a big part. Let's go to Darren with Tim Watson. Well, Joel's congratulations. I've got to say, your timing is impeccable. <laughs> I tell you, uh, uh, it was a dream come true to come to Collingwood, obviously. Um, you know, I just wanted to get back to Melbourne and, and Collingwood were fantastic to have me and uh, it's been a great year and it's a bloody great ride to be something bit. This is awesome to be a part of this and, uh, you know, number two, I, I'm bloody, I'm going to cherish this one. When you headed to Collingwood, did you think that a premiership was within your grasp so soon? Oh, look, we knew. We knew we had a great list, um, great, great young group of players um, and we just knew it was our time, you know, we had, had great belief. Had a cracking pre-season um, and everything just seemed to click right from round one. And, you know, we just, it's just, it's just funny. I mean, words can't describe it, you know. It feels... Did you feel like you might have blown it last week? No, nah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say blown it. Look, it's a bit like, St Gilda obviously had the momentum going in the last quarter there, but I suppose, you know, if we didn't take our chances uh, in front of goal, a few things didn't go away. But uh, to the boys' credit, we got over it quickly on Sunday and um, really dug deep on Monday. And, had great belief all week um, and really just come out today and left nothing in the tank. Well done. Congratulations. Thanks, to me. Thanks boys. Hey. <laughs> he hasn't missed a match since round 7, 2005, Jolly. That's good for a ruckman, isn't it? That says a lot about it. What about our Norm Smith medalist? 29 disposals, 11 tackles, 6 clearances for Scott Pendlebury. Just 22 years of age. Yeah, it was the complete game, I think, uh, when the game was in the balance. And it was there for probably those two middle quarters. He was the one who was driving it out of the clearance. He, he was winning the clearance. He had a good balance between contested possessions and uncontested possessions. The, the staggering thing, or not, the really impressive thing was he only had the five kicks last week and he looked sore and lame and just to play the way, you assume he was probably still under the weather, but his game was outstanding. Just dug deep today, didn't he? And more so, the way he just generaled everybody around the stoppages today, that was the biggest highlight for myself. Yeah, he you know, used the ball well and, and brought his teammates into the game, but just generaled everyone and, uh, and was just outstanding and deserved the medal. So he's got a bit of time and space, hasn't he, Pendlebury? He always looks like 
And there is the Norm Smith. And uh, for Ross Lyon, in... here he is down in the rooms. He's an admirable man, isn't he? We love the way he goes about his business. He's so well prepared and a bit of blow for him today. I think it'll take him about an hour to realise we need to find another forward or two. Because all of a sudden today, Rewald was their only forward, really, until Gilbert went in. So that's what they need. Pretty good everywhere else, but they need another couple of forwards. It's tough when you've been in three grand finals in two years and you don't win yeah. any of them, don't you? And the Saints still sitting on that bogey. I mean, Colin will get a big monkey off the back today, don't they? They win another premiership for the poor old Saints. They keep saying 1966 and it's getting further away. Well, they've got a huge, a huge self-belief. I was speaking to Lee Tudor before the game and he just spoke so much about how much the players drive on that soul sort of thing. And uh, that's going to be tested over the summer. It's one, one grand final lost is one thing, but to do it twice, and as you said, Bruce, three grand finals in two years is absolutely a very bitter pill to take. But if, if anyone can, good faith in Revolt and Goddard. I think it's always good when Collingwood break the drought and win a grand final. To experience this today, can I say special? Because it is, isn't it? <laughs> I think the Collingwood <laughs> Army's out in full force. I think that we can say for sure. Jono, a great performance by what is a great club today. Well, like we said, they've just been outstanding absolutely all year and, uh, you know, they deserve to uh, win the Premiership today. It's been terrific to have you part of our team on behalf of Dennis and the rest of the crew. It's been a magnificent season. It's ended in the best possible way if you're Barrick for the black and the white. Well done.